Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38 verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell, keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the cold, touch my lips, here I am. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the coal, touch my lips, here I am. Would you take the cold, touch my lips, here I am. Take the cold, touch my lips, here I am. Spirit of the living God, speak to your people. You have instructed this meeting and you have brought a word tonight. Someone's destiny is dependent on this word. There are people following online. There are people listening there are thousands and millions more that will listen after tonight. I pray, O oh God, that you will put your anointing and your grace upon this teaching. May it not be trivialized, O oh God. I pray that you activate destinies in a strange way tonight. In the name of Jesus, answer the questions that are in the hearts of your people. Release the anointings that they desire for the next level of their lives. Lord, we thank you for people here who are sick oppressed who are here just trusting you for a touch some do not even know what the name of their issues are but i pray that they will receive a touch from god tonight in the name of jesus christ god bless you ecclesiastes 10 15 ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15 jesus we bless you It's always a pleasure to bring God's word. And every time the word of God comes, it comes not just to challenge us, but to change us. If you are not changed by the word, listen, if the word of God cannot change you, then nothing else can change you. Are we together? Because the word of God created the heavens and the earth. Praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15. Read it slowly. Read it intelligently. Read it with understanding. One to read. Ah, no, 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 no. Slowly doesn't mean quietly. One to read. He never said the labor of the foolish whereas some of them would have found out why some escaped. But he says the labor of the foolish the problem is not the labor the problem is those who are laboring there is a condition the bible says the labor of the foolish does what weary every one of them 
why because he knoweth not that's what makes him foolish because he does not know how to go to the city there is a way to go to the city there is a formula to go to the city listen please there is a system that can take a man from where he is to his place in destiny and the bible says the foolish and the wise do the same thing seemingly they are all laboring but then the bible says it wearied every one of them and this is why it worries them it says they do not know how it did say they do not know the name of the city they know what they want they know where they want to go to but the system the system to take them from where they are to where they need to be you know i've said it again and again that believers are not confused as to the outcome of their lives what they want we all know what we want or at least we have an idea the challenge usually is the understanding of what it will take to leave us from where we are to where we need to be and i pray that god will open our eyes in the name of jesus write this word down destiny write this word down destiny destiny the word destiny is a very interesting word there's almost no man of god who has not spoken about this word we love it so much we dream about it we discuss it but the bible says listen please that there is a path listen there is a path that seemeth right but then it says the end thereof are the ways of death are we together now the word destiny simply means your predefined place of fulfillment write it down please i'll give you a few definitions quickly your predefined place of fulfillment predefined means that you do not guess in the loins of prophecy and in the loins of time there is a place allocated for you please listen there is a place in destiny there is a place in prophecy allocated for each and every one of us and your fulfillment and your relevance in life is tied to not only your discovery but your arrival you there is a condition there is a place where you must arrive to be able to find the joy and the fulfillment of living is called destiny the second definition of destiny is the place where your assignment finds full expression your destiny represents the place where your assignment your purpose on earth your reason for living your destiny represents the place where you can say experientially that i am living the reason for which i am born i am making impact number three i went ahead of myself the third definition of destiny is the place of notable and consistent impact the place of notable and consistent impact no longer the place of desire no longer the place of ambition that you have gotten to a place where your impact is notable your impact is significant the last definition of the word destiny destiny also represents a place where you have earned the right to transform lives and to watch those lives transform others not just that you are transforming lives you are fulfilling destiny to the extent to which you have earned the right to transform lives 
and you have the privilege in your lifetime of watching those lives you have transformed transform others hallelujah dr miles munro of blessed memory a man who has changed my life so much i honor him in life and in death he said this he said the greatest tragedy in life is not death the greatest tragedy in life is a life without a purpose a life without a meaning a life without a reason for living that you get up in the morning and there is no constructive definition as to what justifies your living there are so many people angry and frustrated in life listen please we attempt to cover the need for activating and fulfilling destiny with many things we try education and then you know after many years of laborious study we don't seem to make sense out of our sacrifice we try marriage and for many people is hell they are living in hell literally we try money we try several things in an attempt to get to that place but it doesn't seem to bring that fulfillment and satisfaction and many people in Nigeria in their old age are full of regrets, are full of pain, anointed people inclusive. So tonight I want to challenge us. There's nothing that gives me joy as seeing an individual or a people. Listen please, living a life of purpose and a life of meaning. Your need for the anointing is useless without an understanding of destiny your need for financial prosperity your need for a wife or a husband your need for children your need for influence is absolutely useless if you do not understand god's idea of destiny say there is a place for me in life i want you to shout it with conviction listen there is no man born of a woman i know you've heard it but listen to it with an anointing on it there is no man born of a woman regardless of the conditions that surrounded your birth dr miles Munro said they may be illegitimate parents but there are not there may be illegitimate relationships but there are no illegitimate children the concept of an illegitimate child is just a social cultural term it does not exist there's no such thing as an illegitimate child are we together everybody that appears on this earth appears for a reason intentionally allowed to come nobody listen nobody has the power in himself to just fabricate a child and bring him in this realm are we together now so every one of us seated here and those following and listening we have a place in life and destiny but so many people never get to discover it so many people never get to live in the reality in fact it's, it's cheaper to not even discover it than to discover it and never actualize it in your lifetime you can justify your pain by saying i never had a, an opportunity to know but then it's painful when you know that this is the prophetic blueprint of my life and then you never get to live it are we together there is no one sent here on earth by mistake you just arrive and then you say lord why am i here and god will say ah sorry oh, let's check why is he here exactly no 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 no. we can choose to refuse to become the prophecy upon our lives we can reject god's program for our lives and create another program by ourselves but anyone who will find fulfillment especially in this end time there are men and women who must align to the purposes of the kingdom listen you are not here to create a program for yourself you are here to walk in a program that has been predestined are we together Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 5. He was speaking to a little boy called Jeremiah. Revealing to him his prophetic destiny. This was a little boy who was destined to be a prophet. To speak the purposes of God over nations. And here he was having an encounter with the Lord. And then he was receiving a download of the blueprint. What he would live for. What he would die for. And here's what he says. Before I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee 
and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and I did what ordained thee a prophet to the nations so on on Jeremiah's day of birth Jeremiah's mother would have held him and looked at him and said wow little child very helpless but in the loins of prophecy that was a prophet when you read further it begins to reveal the extent of his prophetic influence how that he was vested with the responsibility of not only speaking God's counsel to individuals but to kings to nations to nobles it was up to Jeremiah to never fulfill that there was a man in the Bible called Elisha and the Bible tells us that Elisha was a farmer but in that farmer was a prophet a prophet who would do mighty things he would have died a farmer because he did not know the road to the city but something happened in his life may you find the road map to your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ let me tell you you see jealousy look up please jealousy resentment huh all of this criticism backbiting are a direct product of the confusion usually when we meet a stumbling block on our road to destiny and we are surrounded by all kinds of vagueness and confusion that idleness in our confusion will make us to turn and when you see another life walking with a level of dexterity and accuracy it usually will create a reaction that reaction is what we call resentment that reaction is what we call criticism are we together now so it's not about saying stop criticizing people you have to be too busy in your idleness you there is nothing else to do but when you find something that occupies you the time span earmarked for you will look too short the, a sense of urgency will drive you like a madman Are we together now? Everyone has a destiny in Christ. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. Jesus who was a portrait of our life. The firstborn among the many brethren. In the similitude of our life said this. Said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Lo, I come. This is why I came. When Jesus showed up no confusion he understood exactly the blueprint of his life when he went to the temple in luke chapter 4 the bible says it was given to him the scroll of Isaiah, the prophecy that isaiah prophesied about him and then he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me because this and that and that look at a little boy at age 12 he had discovered his assignment already was about at the temple studying and preparing for a great destiny to an extent that he told his parents he said ah, do you not know are you no longer uh, um, well not bible students but do you no longer go to the temple to hear the prophecy mary have you forgotten i thought you said the angel spoke to you why are you questioning my zeal to fulfill the reason for which i was born 33 and a half years and he made an impact with his life that for eternity we will never recover truly truly i believe in long life but sincerely speaking it's not how long you live but how effective there is a way a man's one year can become someone else's lifetime and impact in one year can be so transgenerational jesus died at 33 and a half or a quarter years old but out of that 33 years only three years were used in active ministry are we together Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Tonight, I want to share with us on the requirements for manifesting your destiny. That's not a topic. It's just what I want to do now. The requirements, the cost dimension. Many of us are aware. I'm not so much about the discovery as it is manifesting it I've, I've done a teaching discovering your purpose you can get it and several other teachings along the um, the lines of destiny but tonight the lord put it in my heart to teach us there is a system everybody said there is a system you're not going to walk to 
to your place of destiny just um, by default nothing works in life until you walk it nothing moves in life until you move it right newton's first law of mechanics nothing will move until you move it you sit down the way you are nothing will change you will grow older the only thing that will change is your age you are celebrating 35 36 then you jump to 47 48 but your life is not moving do you know my concept of birthdays i truly believe in celebrating birthdays but birthday is not just the fact that you were born in my opinion birthdays should be celebrated only when purpose is discovered and is being lived you truly do not have a right you have a right to thank god for being born but you have no right to celebrate your birthday what are you celebrating you should celebrate the reason for living if your life is so impactful you will not even be the one celebrating you would have blessed people too much they will be too grateful to leave you when you have to call everybody and remind them ha ah, hey, Jimmy Abba you mean you, you, are, you are just remembering that it's my birthday it's a message read the writings on the wall your life is not notable enough there are people they prepare for their birthdays one year as soon as they finish one they start what do I do for him for all that he has done in my life some of us harass people we have never invested in their lives two weeks to my birthday said just to let you know that it's my birthday and you send a general bulk message again reminder and then out of those 200 people maybe only two or three it's a message it's not for you to be angry it's a sign that your life is not blessing anybody notably let me tell you no matter how dark and depraved people are when you bless their lives they become too grateful to not notice it is God speaking to us I want to share with you some strong requirements you must be determined to not just succeed but fulfill your destiny my concept of success is fulfilling your assignment not just moving forward not just getting married not just finishing school not just getting a job or a promotion or a raise all those things are periphery the, the truth is listen listen let me tell you if you do not find out god's goal for your life and you are not living it you are wasting your time and you are wasting the time of others amen are we together I like you to pray a prayer before we go into the details of the requirement and say Lord any price for my destiny I receive grace to pray it lift your voice if you are not ready you don't have to pray you won't go to hell but be sure that you are not going to rise any price for my destiny Lord I'm tired of living my life carelessly I'm growing older time is going there's nothing that is giving my life meaning as I listen to your word now Lord if it will sting me let it sting me but my heart my mind my spirit is open let no price be too great oh God for my destiny let no price be too great for my destiny are you praying Lord there is an anointing upon my life the nations must drink from there is no price that is too great make sure you are praying don't be careless tonight you are about to hear something that will change your life some of you change your lineage because of you through you you've been complaining about what has happened now God is giving you a choice to make a decision that probably your parents did not make Lord let pain let pain not stand my way to greatness give me grace to conquer pain give me grace to conquer shame hallelujah let's write number one requirement to fulfilling your god-given destiny the first requirement is an encounter with jesus 
a genuine encounter with Jesus not coming out for an altar call that's important but an encounter with Jesus John 7 when you read John 7 John 3 I'm sorry verse 7 actually it's 3 to 7 John chapter 3 the encounter that Nicodemus had with Jesus now understand this the context of that scripture is very interesting because Nicodemus was a teacher of the law Nicodemus was a doctor he was a philosopher he was intelligent he was a graduate he was even employed Nicodemus was not a small man he was a man of influence but every time together with his colleagues they kept insulting Jesus castigating Jesus but there were secret fears and frustration Nicodemus got to a point where his life was not making sense and then he sneaked in by night and came to Jesus and then he says Rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him and then Jesus said verily verily I say unto you right he said except ye be born again you shall not see the kingdom of God now he, he begins to talk how can I be born again will I enter into my mother's womb and then verse 5 he now says um, you know verily verily I say unto you except ye be born of the water and of the spirit then you cannot enter the kingdom right then Jesus now begins to speak and all of that and says the wind blow it where it listed verse 7 that's where I'm really going to verse 7 this is what he said marvel not that I say unto you ye must be born again he didn't say ye may he didn't say ye should being born again is not an advice being born again is a requirement writing jam is not an advice writing jam is a requirement having five credits no story is not an advice are we together is the necessary and sufficient condition to gain admission let me tell you life has requirements there is a cut off point the starting point is born again it's amazing how many people want to walk with God but they don't want to be born again they want to be around church they want to be around the things of God they want to have Christian names being born again is more than just confessing Jesus being born again is prioritizing God that God becomes your obsession your priority and your motivation there's no hope of leaving him has born again because he, he he explained it he said you must be born of two things the water and the spirit the water there represents the ministry of the word the cleansing power of the word an encounter with the holy ghost being born again is not just cheap talk where you just come and stand i believe in you you are pinching yourself and laughing it may be a starting point but i'm telling you being born again is much more than jesus becoming one of those important deities there is a herbalist at home there is jesus there is the charm it's just that he's the most important of all of them you are not born again please i'm saying this whether you are listening here and you are or you are following online if you have any other charm any other talisman any other material point of reference point of of activating the realm of the spirit outside of christ and everything that is consistent with his character you are not born again very simple are we together here you can't tell me you are born again and then under certain conditions you can receive something you know and many of us listen many of us young people you may be laughing at me but there's something they gave you from home they say look life this life is more than what you are seeing that is true you need help that is true but the, where the problem starts is what you are giving they pray for you and give you a bible and then they squeeze one charm that looks like an arrow they tell you to put it under your box you are not born again no sir see let me tell you anything that the lord jesus cannot bring in your life don't let anybody fool you that it will happen it may look like it's happening but you see because jesus said i am the door you know what that means i am the legal access point to everything in the kingdom he never said i am the only one he said i am the door any other person can enter the house through windows but there is always a side effect you will not see it yet until the charm starts working 
so the charm will give you money and take your fertility are you getting the point now that's not the discussion with the herbalist he himself does not know the side effect because he is practicing so you collect the charm you start building the house but then you find out that you cannot give birth again or you give birth to 12 children and none of them become useful any other door listen there are many like this place now if we see you smuggling yourself through this window we know you are an armed robber you are a thief are we together there is a legitimate entrance don't tell me you are entering which way are you following jesus said i am the door i am the door don't tell me you are getting rich don't tell me you are getting blessed don't tell me you are increasing it matters to me whether you are following the door then i will know whether your success will have side effect on me let me tell you don't come close to anybody until you study the systems around his life and how he is doing what he is doing how she is doing what she is doing are we together now an encounter with jesus when you encounter jesus you will not only love him you will follow him you will not only love him you will serve him you will not only love him you will live for him you will not only love him you will influence others into that encounter with him has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with being a man of god it is the effect of an encounter when saul of tarsus in the book of Acts, had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. It changed his life forever. Remember, what's the name of that short man in the Bible? Zacchaeus. When Zacchaeus had an encounter with Jesus, what happened? It changed his life forever. Zacchaeus, just come down. I'm going to your house. At once, Zacchaeus changed. When he met the centurion, he changed. There were other people I believe that Jesus met that were not recorded in the Bible because you see the way they had a soft spot towards him. One of them was Joseph of Arimathea. I believe he was a great man and because he was Caesar's friend, you can liken it to being in the same political party. So he would not be outspoken about Jesus, but secretly, secretly he loved him. Have you had an encounter with Jesus? enough to fuel your life for a lifetime if the lifespan do you know it's a terrible thing when people love God on campus or love God before marriage I have seen many people who used to love God on campus you see them today they are hardly born again some were campus fellowship presidents some held crusades have you seen some of our parents you see them drinking beer and you say daddy do something about it say look i held crusade in benin i held crusade in abuja i did three days dry you see them giving you what is supposed to be a good accolade and they say i've tried everything so don't even bring this issue of man of god you are just starting before you were born we served god have you heard of ebenezer obey i was in his band have you heard of uh, so 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 and so I, I sang there they carry the pain of their frustration and make it look as though it's serving god that brought that to them it's a terrible thing for someone to say i once was with god and now i've left him no sir he said, ye who have continued with me. Not those who started. Ye who have continued with me. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I'm with you forever. I'm with you forever. I'm with you forever. Mm. Lift your voice and pray. I need you to secure your place. Because some of us are already one leg in, one leg out. The pain of recession is about sweeping you. Ah! Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I prove the your Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to trust. Lift your voice and say, Lord, what shall separate me from your love? Not famine. Uh -uh. not CGPA not recession I am with you and
and I'm with you forever whether things work well or not whether ministry works well or not is a decision I have made lift your voice and pray any other person can make his decision any other person can say anything Lord I know that I may be angry if I don't succeed but leaving you is not part of the equation it's a salt covenant it's a fraternity with you in life and in death I pledge allegiance to the Lamb with all my strength with all I am I will see of an encounter you will raise your children after your encounter don't tell me you are a christian father are you hearing what i'm saying and you give birth to a child and then you don't care what the child is watching you don't care whether the child is going to church are we together many little children that's why i love our little ones in koinonia you may think they are not understanding what you are teaching but it's entering their spirit we live in a society where parents they, they just their assignment is just to give birth to children they give them education they give them every other thing but jesus are we together yeah you're going to church you leave the baby with a house help are we together you come back from church and you sit down other adults are watching certain things that may not be good for the child you don't care let me tell you if you have an, an encounter with Jesus everything you do whoever is under your roof will do it oh come on you stay under my roof as I'm blasting tongues I want to hear your own in your room in your room you are responding you, you don't stay under my roof I'm paying for your life and you are living your life then it means you are an adult enough if you stay under my roof you will serve Jesus I assure you please take what I'm saying seriously our society is depraved today because many parents went to church but they did not have encounter so they only gave us what was valuable to them which was education as good as it is they didn't give us Jesus some of us were on our way to destruction but God intercepted. Ah, hallelujah. You've heard me say it again and again. When a lady brings a gentleman, a lady brings a gentleman to her parents, they don't ask whether he's born again and serious with God. Let me tell you, in one minute, I can know whether you are born again or not, even if you wear a suit. Ha <laughs> ha. This is a culture. This is a culture. Are we together? So we give our daughters to foolish men who are anti-kingdom. We give our sons to wicked women who are anti-Christ. And we, this, this combination produces nonsense. That's what is destroying our, our generation now. What we are reaping is the carelessness of 30 years. The carelessness of 40 years and if we do not correct it let me tell you the key is not insulting the government there must be a generation that is addicted and no nonsense about God 
imagine a man getting married with his wife two of them pray in tongues no problem two of them love god no problem as you give birth to your child before wicked men hold him you hold him as the father Shakata bakataya, you are prophesying. What are you doing? I'm prophesying. Oh, stop that thing. Are you joking? That's how I married in the first place. I call you blessed. You came out from my loins. I prophesy. You will everything is born after its kind. I will not love God and give birth to an arm robber. So you prophesy. If I'm your father, you should look like it. I'm showing you what lack of an encounter has produced in our society to an extent to an extent that if you are godly they look at you as if something is wrong with your life you have to explain godliness something that should be institutionalized go outside of Zaria and see a young lady if a young lady likes a guy do you know how she attracts him she starts singing bad and nonsense song thinking that's what he likes are you getting the point now so you sing all of the songs thinking that by singing that the guy will be attracted brother shout no way Abba. Abba. after reading proverbs 31 uh -uh. ladies you too shout no way don't bring shell and nmpc and deceive anybody do you have an encounter with jesus listen don't just say I have an encounter with God. God means anything. Do you have an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God? Let me prove to you that a man has an encounter with Jesus. You are unashamed about submitting to his values. If you have met Jesus, then you must be ready to submit to his values. Don't come and meet me with your philosophy, your ideology. You have not met Jesus. Listen. If you are here in Koinonia, if you are truly under this grace, you should have submitted to our way of doing things. So when you see somebody who is under this grace, you know at once the way you talk, the things you do, your passion for God. You can easily know someone who just came to Koinonia for the first time. Sometimes people come to share testimonies here and once in a while they can be a bit unruly or a bit vulgar and I see the reaction in people. It's like no 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 this is anti koinonia culture i can see it in you so why will you go out with somebody who just told you he's born again born again is like an id card you can see it is visible okay this 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 thing this thing is i'm speaking from my spirit some relationships should be cancelled yeah we cancel it in jesus name I'm not asking you. You will see what will happen from the prophecy. Because some of you are insisting. I counsel it in the name of Jesus Christ. Destroy your life in the name of love. Love is not stupidity. Are we together? If you have had an encounter with Jesus, you must have the value system of the kingdom. Somebody comes to your house, everything he's saying is nonsense. Every wrong word do you know there are words you don't even have to be born again societally speaking when you are getting to certain political positions they culture you when you when you are going to see the queen of england or they culture you you learn how to speak there are indices that show you have encountered god number one it's your words not just dressing your words you speak nonsense you say anything anytime you have ah, come on please please all kinds of selection in your phone there is the one for when you are high you, you just take it high then whenever you feel guilty when you listen to messages on rapture the coming of christ you just switch truly you have not encountered jesus don't laugh as i'm telling you this because it's a serious thing you are not going to bribe god into fulfilling destiny it has to be his way everybody say an encounter with jesus now lift your voice and pray and say lord anything trying to prove in my life that i've not had an encounter drive it drive it far drive it far drive it far some of you need to make some calls to certain people call that gentleman and tell him i love you but apostle just preached a message i can't marry you it can't work again sorry about the time i've wasted it can't work again it's as simple as that 
some of us who are about to get married some of us who have children it's time to get back bring the cross to your house bring Christian values to your house don't live a life that is vulgar don't raise children that are wayward in discipline no sir no sir hallelujah listen listen you see these are the things that should be discussed in church I'm telling you this are we together yeah how many elders are not born again we just array the names of people. When did this one join our church? 1991. When did this one join our church? 98. If we give this person and don't give it, he'll be angry. Well, let's give him something. Are you seeing that? And then you now pick somebody just because he's old. He's the elder in charge of marriage counseling. You have never supervised what he's teaching the young people. And they come around and he's teaching nonsense. Do you think all this idea of beating wife do you think people just invented it someone advised somebody and say I did it, it worked, do it it works let's return Jesus to our lives oh. let's return Jesus to our lives you know what I'm saying is not a lie give me you everything else can wait give me you Hope I'm not too late Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Lord, give me you Hallelujah Praise the Lord So please, if you are here today At the end of the service, I will make an altar call Please, I want you to examine your concept of born again if you have not submitted to the values of the kingdom, you need Jesus. Please, let's not argue this thing this night. You need Jesus. I don't care whether you are praying in tongues. No, sir. Are we together? Then your life, then your home. If my shirt has palm oil, you spill palm oil and you come with a white shirt and hug me and I hold you there. If you leave, won't you see some stain? Something about, show me what implicates you and shows us you have met Jesus. Don't just say you met Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Acts, in the Jerusalem council, when they saw Peter, they saw these guys, they knew they were timid, but they knew they had been with Jesus. They saw them when they were timid, but now they had seen them men of conviction. Let's sit down and continue. An encounter with Jesus, number one. Number two, now that we have cleared the way, I want us to sit down and talk now because this second point that I want to bring is really where the anointing is this night. So what you have even received now is an appetizer. Here comes the main course. May you eat it, every part of it, in Jesus' name. The second key, the second key to fulfilling your destiny the second key to fulfilling your god-given destiny is the power of preparation and thoroughness write it down the power of preparation and thoroughness preparation thoroughness preparation thoroughness 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 the power of preparation the power of thoroughness second chronicles 27 please verse 6 second chronicles 27 verse 6 second chronicles 27 i like us to read it is projected one to read so dotham became aha uh -huh, because he prepared his ways before the lord what was the secret of his exploits? What was the secret of his might? He prepared his way. And he did that in the presence of God. Under his supervision. Preparation. There is power in preparation. Write it down. There is power 
in preparation we live in a time and a generation especially for we young people there is such an obsession for manifestation such an obsession for manifestation oh let me prove i'm a millionaire by age 20 let me prove i'm this and that let me prove there's nothing wrong with those things but preparation preparation there is such an appetite of bringing our future into our today to prove a point and we destroy ourselves because we lack that ingredient of preparation what do you do during preparation number one what do you do during preparation number one you learn and understand the principles of the kingdom i call them the mysteries of the kingdom that's what you do during times of preparation your times of preparation are largely times of learning and understanding the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom God has called me into an extraordinary ministry. God has told me I have an apostolic or a prophetic ministry. God has told me I'm going to the nations. Every time in my dream, I see myself changing people. Thank you, man of God. But what are you doing about it? Oh, I'm already buying suits. God has even shown me who my wife will be. That's not preparation. You are, that's carelessness. I assure you, you will not arrive that way. Preparation. This great ministry that God is giving me, what will it take? What do I know? Do I understand administration? Do I understand finances? This great ministry will be fueled by the word and by the anointing. Have I understood the mysteries? Listen, I want you to put your life on a project. Find out all the tools you will be using in the place of destiny and begin to source for them. Find out. There are many tools we need. You need the anointing in the place of destiny. Have you discovered how to bring it and keep it in your life? And multiply it in your life. Number two, you need access to revelation. The working knowledge of the word of God. What keys do you have in your hand? Show me the keys you are accessing and I'll see whether you will get to your tomorrow. Finances. Our destinies are capital intensive so they require a lot of finances show me what mentorship show me what book you are reading oh apostle i'm doing business you will fail that's not the key the key is to receive knowledge the key is to change your mindset not to offer products and services yet that's the last step of the equation we love manifestation we love manifestation i receive text messages all the time and most of what people we, we, we like programs we like events conferences conventions someone sent me a text that he had a vision that we're holding six conventions in koinonia every year i said shift that vision to the future it's certainly not happening now no convention for what what is the meaning of the word convention what is the meaning of the word conference we abuse these things because we do rituals without revelation are we together now now is the time for building please hear me now is not the time for buying suits now is the time for buying books now is the time for buying the experiences of people now is the time for buying the pain of people buy their experiences preparation I see many people who say they want to be men of God I don't criticize them but I'm just laughing because most people think all there is to ministry is to have the ability to throw somebody down you are joking if it was that easy I guarantee you people would not be suffering Benihim came around Nigeria and you see the number of desperate people we all flocked in waiting to receive an anointing what does that tell you it's scarce genuine power is scarce make no mistakes about it do you know why many people do not rise we are comfortable with average average will only bring you in the scene but never distinguish you reward is for those who are distinguished not those who are present <laughs> is God speaking to someone there is power in preparation let me tell you when I started out in ministry I didn't do many of the things many people are doing in life. No. No. 
that time ask Jimmy, I used to walk with a bag remember my black bag it had Bible it had my books the books the speakings of God to my life I would always walk with it those were the times you see people who buy tape or they post tape maybe Pastor Chris any other tape and they are small rechargeable they would raise all their money and buy rechargeable not not many of us seated here you do not have any device for hearing the word of God you don't but you have clothes you are a young lady of 19, 20 you have clothes of a married woman of 35 it's not wise it's, it's a terrible it's an extended version of foolishness are we together you, you must take your destiny serious this thing does not happen by magic God is not a charm he's not a genie you've got to be serious some of us as you keep your bible like this it's Friday that you pick it again and yet you move around I am I, I, I hope to be called let's see which one uh, prophet uh, apostle I will use pastor you are dreaming <laughs> are we together One gentleman sent me a text during miracle service that he was coming. I said, who are you? He says, a man of God somewhere. I said, that's all right, you are welcome. Then he sent me a text. He says, informing me so that they'll put a special reservation for him in front. I said, my brother, this front seat you see is a testimony. The front seat is not a wish. It's a testimony. This is a testimony. You, you come and sit down. The seat will reject you. Have you seen that kind of thing where people, kings, come and sit down? And they say somebody dies. You don't sit down in a seat unprepared, sir. No. Preparation. I look at your prayer life and I know whether you are preparing. You want to be able to stand and preach. That's what kills a lot of men of God. They have not built that spiritual capacity. Don't you know that praying in tongues is like doing business? You are making an investment of strength into your future. A time will come, you will not have the time to do 10 hours every day again. I can't pray for 10 hours every day. I'll be an irresponsible man of God because there are things to do. But there were times I would stay morning till night. I was building strength. He said, eat for the journey is far. Brothers and sisters, some of you, now is the time to lock yourself. You may look stupid, but you are building an extraordinary ministry. You are already in prayer band two weeks. You say they don't know me. Please sit down, Jare, and, and walk on your destiny. All this quest for recognition. Recognition. I think they should know me. No, sit down. Sit down. There is power in preparation. Let your competence announce you. Let the grace upon your life announce you. You cannot light a lamp and put it under a bushel. But you also cannot put a lamp that is not lit on top. All this quest for manifestation, please hear the voice of the Lord tonight. That's not the way to do it. That's not the way to do it someone asked me a question I think I don't know if it was a year or two ago and said apostle what are you doing with your life now I told him I said I am preparing for an extraordinary life he said preparing I said exactly uh, you think this thing I'm doing is ministry this is industrial attachment my goodness my goodness my goodness this is not close to what I've seen in the visions of the Lord it doesn't even look like it compared to the koinonia God showed me this is a, a cave we are just waking up are you that inspired or have you started clapping for yourself and you want to build a camp around it affect my life breathe on me i look to you for life affect my life breathe on me i look to you for life affect my life breathe on me i look to you for life Affect my life. We don't need. I look to you for life. Let me come to your house and your room. Show me your library, and I see how serious you are with knowledge. Books are very important. They are a communication of your value for knowledge. When you buy a book, you are not buying paper. You are buying a man's pain. You are you are you are you are buying access to a man's testimony people's mistakes at a platter of gold 
for you to study and understand there are many people who don't read let me tell you how you know you are not preparing for your destiny is excessive idleness when i see a young man who is idle you must be lazy or you are not preparing do you know the urgency number one for most of us over 95 percent of us a mistake has already been made in our foundation i hope you know some of us got born again at 26 27 you are already behind at age 14 mary was giving birth to jesus you are 25 you are not born again you are already behind schedule why should you be roaming up and down in broad daylight you move around and you see people just taking sugar cane gisting and then they come to someone else's house how are you i was just strolling are you free and then they are offended when you say you are not free everybody say i'm going somewhere say it i'm going somewhere and now is the season of preparation I will prepare you want to be a millionaire let me see the preparation let me see the preparation show me the character traits you are building that will qualify God to grant you access to such wealth you want to be an extraordinary leader show me those you are receiving mentorship from. you are moving around not doing anything ladies hear me don't be under pressure. The next thing in your life after school is not just marriage. Thank God for marriage. But build yourself. Focus on preparation than manifestation. You are not qualified to receive anything you are not prepared for. Preparation. Preparation. Settle down, prepare. Kata, kata, baladaba. Lord, you said you are going to give me the nations. Walk on my character let me become an exceptional man of God Lord at this small level of ministry they are already criticizing me I can imagine the criticisms on great men like Papa Oyedeko and Adeboye Lord build me you have already told me that my ministry will have branches all over the nations of the earth can I survive the criticism that takes that, that having that kind of anointing will bring don't you know it's, it's, it's risky to be rich do you know the criticisms Somebody will look at you and say, young people like this, they, they, they thought something. You are right. You are right. Nobody becomes rich just by doing nothing. They've criticized you small. Somebody just looked and said, I don't like Pastor Femi's shirt. And he's, he's angry. He's quarreling. He said, no, no, what is wrong with my shirt? Ah, and then you now want to be a leader over two million people. You want to die? Ask Moses. Moses, the meekest man on earth. He was angry and about to kill himself. God said, calm down. That's how ministry is. Have you ever gone to God for prayer? And God said, no, that's how it is. So I hope you know that, that there is no breakthrough for this prayer. It's how it works. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah. A very interesting friend who wanted to organize crusade one time the guy was passionate about souls he was not passionate about finances so he wanted to organize crusade I, after the prayer fasting visions everything he didn't even start because there was nothing to start with he couldn't even start i told him i said well these are the logistics that are part of ministry And he was so disappointed and angry because in his mind I was the sponsor of that crusade. I said, no way. God did not give me any vision. I am not the ram and the scapegoat you had from God. Flog out your way of funding that vision. Brothers and sisters, preparation is powerful. When you go through, you read books and you see how a man of God will tell you 12 years in his life, nothing worked. And then you say that I'm four years. That means there's hope for me. That means it's not unusual. It's not like I don't have faith. Let's continue going. You study about a man who built his conglomerate. He will tell you he built 20 companies and they failed. He was the 21st one that is the one that is blessing you. And you say, I just built three and they failed. Ah, there's hope for me. You are learning. Preparation is giving you strength. 
a time will come they look at you and they say you claim to be a man of god's wife look at your husband his mouth is looking dry you are not feeding him and you say about husband am i not feeding you you didn't prepare because if you prepared you would have studied other men of god's wife and they would have told you this thing is normal so as they are insulting you you just say oh so that's how it is your spirit has been prepared anything you cannot take now is because you are not preparing you will see a man of God lying down and think the place is cold. You lie down there and the heat will burn you because your skin. You know what they used to do for masquerade? They say they used to cook them so that nothing will happen. Allow preparation cooking. So that while somebody is shouting now and saying, Do you know Apostle is a herbalist? Do you, I know the woman that gave him power. And then you come and tell me as a, as a concern. I say, Apostle, I respect you. They are spoiling your name and then I laugh. <laughs> I would have cried in 2006 or 7 but now oh come on prophesy to yourself say myself grow up say it myself grow up there are many needless struggles we are going through because we are not prepared you are not the first to be criticized are we together you are not the first to go through challenges you are not the first to go through disappointment it's only because you have not studied others who had worse cases so you don't have a basis for comfort God is speaking to someone tonight preparation some of us are confused where we are now you don't know whether to start a church you don't know whether to start a prayer group you are not the first to start ministry go and examine the top 20 ministries how did they start there was a day it was in their mind did they start a church service bishop oyedeko did not want to start a church because at that time there were already too many churches based on him so your confusion about should i start a branch fellowship is because of your level and your thinking you are not the first to think like that when you learn that you will appreciate mentorship because you bring your mountain and somebody just walks on it and says, ah, I see this mountain, I remember 1981. Go and read the book. There is, there is a solution for that mountain. Oh man of God, our ministry is about to be thrown out now. We are owing 30 million. I said, just 30 million, I am compl complaining. In 91, we were owing 500 million. And then you now sit down. You are hearing a man talking to you and he says, look, let me tell you what to do. Pray, give a seed, and go to bed nothing is as bad as it is and then you conquer that i remember when one time um we held a little program and i was going thirty thousand thirty thousand i was sweating i didn't know what to do with my life thirty thousand it was from one book money somebody loaned us it was so terrible i remember the day it was even late dr bimbo dukoya's books when they brought her to zaria 2005 after organizing the program now very nicely his presence in worship are we together now there was no i mean the whole thing and they needed the money by nine o'clock nine o'clock by seven o'clock i don't i'm not sure i had on to 500 i was sweating around i didn't know what to do so now you are owing eight thousand and you are moving around my blood i, I think i'm having high blood pressure calm down calm down there is something preparation will teach you that you stand up and walk god is speaking to someone it is comforting to see those who have gone through what you are going through times 10 find out what they did to come out preparation and dotan became mighty unmovable let me tell you i have studied the life of men in ways you cannot imagine studying their life built great comfort in me many of them were 10 times as ignorant as i am now yet they were able to go through some things and i said no at this level i even know more there's no reason why i should fidget it will work to work you are not the first to get married you are planning for marriage and you just say ah, my budget is 1.5 eh? dr jenny 1.5 you are seeing a man with two children you will not ask questions sir two children means you married what happened what did you do you know see it's pride to think your problem is new to everybody it's pride what is a mountain to you is a valley to someone you are not the first to have carryover hey will i stay or will they drive me please go to bed there are people who have taught this land you are seeing left right and center to a point that they just look at the board and say glory be to god Fear 
is as a result of ignorance and it's partly a product of not preparing you have ignored the pain and the sacrifice of others somebody's pain you have ignored is why you are afraid today because if you buy their materials and study their lives you will learn their pain koinonia was not built in a day many of you have never cared to ask the story behind it because you don't care all you know is that you are enjoying there will be workers dinner and it's free paid for just dress well and come. I say, I like Koinonia. I like a ministry that takes care of us like this. There was a story. There was a story behind it. Preparation. You learn the principles of the kingdom. Preparation. That's the time of trial and error. Please hear me. That's the time when you are, you are learning to handle the keys of the kingdom. Like a baby trying to hold a key and open a door. You will use wrong keys. You will use wrong keys. It's in the place of preparation. You will know how the anointing works. So God will keep building you. You will read the books. You will listen to the messages. Then one day, you and God will go on small IT. Somebody will now say, please, Pastor Femi, can you just pray for our little group? And he say, ah, me? I mean, you're even calling me pastor. And then on that day, you will pray. Some things will happen. Others will not happen. You will first go with confidence. You have fasted dry. It's even dry. You went for the meeting. And then you go there. Before you start preaching, somebody is already shouting. And you're like, eh. That means this thing is easy. Then every other person you lay hands on now doesn't fall. And I said, what's the confusion? I didn't lay hands on anybody. Somebody was shouting. The ones I now in direct contact with the anointing. So, preparation. You now go back. In one message you are hearing, you will hear a mystery. That explains that operation and say, ah this is what i did wrong you have learned you are learning you are learning are we together you are learning about finances god told you you'll be a multi-millionaire ceo all that you've held home and abroad in your entire life is hundred thousand and you are working one day god will give you it somebody will just send you four hundred thousand and say please can you keep it for me for two weeks and you find out your body is shaking you can't sleep you will get up you are moving up and down you say ah should i touch this money and pay back quickly you see a revelation that you are not qualified you are beginning to see the effect of money then you learn from that preparation that money is a spirit it's not just notes it can do something to you and you are now thinking 200,000 is in my account and I cannot sleep what will happen if 200 million is in my account then you begin to respect every man who you see sitting down he's a millionaire but he's drinking a bottle of water it took discipline to conquer that what are you, what are you ignoring by refusing preparation is God speaking to someone you are preparing you want to be a good wife in the process of preparation you will read a book and see that a man of God's wife she will now say God told me when God told me my husband did not yet know and God was sending me to women to go and cook with them and you say ah the Holy Spirit will tell you now go and do likewise you will now say ah Auntie Shade please can I come to your house just to help you and while you are washing place you are asking her questions and she's answering what happens when a great man is angry as a good wife how do you treat if your husband is a public figure how do you shield him you are not learning you are only saying this brother god has been speaking you are not seeing me you will never see you because god is not a wicked god to carry his servant laboring and just give you no you prepare you prepare say amen stop claiming things carelessly sit down and prepare and before you know it you will see them in your hands I respect people who are mighty yet understand the power of preparation there are people you see in this koinonia mighty men and women in the spirit very mighty you just see them quiet some of them have had one-on-one -on -one encounter with them their prayer life fire their word life fire the maturity and wisdom upon their life is uncommon nobody even knows them they are quiet God is preparing them one day you just see God will carry one brother and give them and say, ah, where is this one coming from? Are you joking? Nobody comes from nowhere. People are preparing quietly. You are the only one standing where pe prepared people are standing, but you are not prepared. 
I receive grace to prepare. Lift your voice and pray. I receive grace. Lord, I see how I've been shortchanging myself. I've been acting like I've arrived. I've been trying to look rich. I've been trying to look anointed. By this teaching tonight, oh God, I receive grace. Grace, koinonia, pray. I stop complaining about what is not working. I value the pain of those who have gone ahead of me. And I make up my mind to draw from them. Shakata baratakaya. Leke prons kebariata lakoto subahaya. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A pastor sent me a text and the pastor was really complaining. He said, man of God, God is increasing us in ministry. But right now I just discovered every other thing in my life has died. My prayer life has died. My word life has died. I still see miracles. I still see great things, but I'm so disorganized. I used to be an organized person. And I told him, I said, you are still using the mindset you, you were using when you were starting ministry. Are we together? Do you know what it means for a very busy person to still maintain his prayer life? There is a technique. It's not just as the spirit leads. There is a system. How do you maintain a prayer life? Reading chapters of the Bible. When from morning till night you are walking. How do you balance that? As an influential person. You are married with two, three children. How do you maintain your spiritual life? How do you maintain a good fatherhood? And a, a good husband? You are not the first to go through it. Find out. There are people who are flawlessly effective. Find out. There are men of God who preach five, six messages every week and everything is new. You want, you are already tired. Your little fellowship in one state somewhere, maybe just two or three branches and it's already killing you. Yet people like Dr. Paul Enenche running six services every Sunday, two services every week, intermittently they can travel to Europe and come back in the morning find out there is a system. There is a system otherwise it will kill you. John G. Lake did not understand that. He did well in ministry and died in his family life. What is the secret of men of God who are effective in family? Their schedules are packed full, everything. I remember when we started, I didn't know that there was a protocol department that handled ministrations and made things easy. I used to handle them by myself. You bring your letter, you come and give me. I look at it. I say, okay, let me go and pray about it. At a point, there were several letters. I said yes to many people. I'll say, yes, I'm coming to your church. Yes, I'm coming to your fellowship. I will not even remember. I found out that I had to prepare four, five messages in a week. It was weighing me down. I said, it's not like I don't have what to say, but I can't stand before God's people and preach what I know God is not leading me to say. I can preach any nice sermon, but will it be effective? Are we together? What do you not know? I'm drawing you to a point. Your pain today is because you have ignored preparation somewhere. Then I began to study. I got Bishop Oedeko's book, Towards Excellence in Life and Ministry. I got that Doug Hayward Mills book, Church Administration and Management. I got some of the Adela Jazz books, Pastoring Without Tears. I got some of these materials and sat down. When I began to study, I said, ah, so this is how it works. I've been killing myself for no reason. Are we together? Killing myself for no reason. I remember when I had to be under pressure to answer everybody's call. It was like I'm a receptionist. Somebody will call and say, is this apostle? I just want to know. And for five minutes, you are arguing with the person. Is this apostle? If it's not apostle, please don't waste my time. And it's my credit to... I'm now calling. I say, apostle, say to apostle, please, do you have time? Because what I'm about to tell you is, is boiling in my spirit. And I will now carry my big head and say, yes, I have time. And for 30 minutes, while you are talking, another text is entering, another call. And I find out that sometimes you can stay three hours. You are just answering call. And you are fagged out. You are fatigued. Someone who finishes work, he will work well, have a nice time with his wife, go to church and come back, then call you. That's when you now want to rest. Then others started calling by one or two because they found out that I don't sleep in the night. They will now call and say, Apostle, sorry, you. They just go ahead. I used to feel so guilty. If I'm sleeping and my phone is ringing, I feel so bad until I read a man of God's book. 
that delivered me now it can ring if it's an emergency call the police yeah call the police people would threaten me and say man of god pride pride you've not gotten anywhere you used to respond to us before you even used to send us recharge card but now you are you are getting arrogant i will feel so bad i'll say but god please search my heart until i found out that that's how people are it's not like they are just becoming it for me they are like that everywhere i just said ah please go to bed ah somebody's already gaining wisdom they're gaining wisdom so when you walk out of here and you say, see what she's wearing you say why does everybody hate me no you are not the only one it's like that you are just discovering it you are just discovering it i don't know why everybody talks about me everybody is there something wrong ah if if you are looking at your legs you will cut two of your legs because there are too many people who can talk ah god is giving us wisdom preparation 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 there are some of us married people people come to your house you are under pressure to cook for them and give them everything because let, let them not say we are not good let them say oh let them say because you will find lousy people they'll come to your house is there pepper soup in this house you will think they are joking they really mean it you will rush go to the market buy, buy cow you think it's just a joke you are not learning to grow up you need to listen to people who have learned to manage people like that Two o'clock, they'll come again. They'll say, sorry, oh, we are here again. Is there still something for us? Then you will read a book that one determined young man one day walked up to them and said, please, visitor, we have, we have a program in this house. There are times we have Bible study. There are times I'm just spending time with my wife. There are times we are spending time with the children. It is important to let us know you are coming. Man say, what is there? What do you think you are? Leave him. Let him go. Carry his trouble and go. At least you are free now. There is something you need to know to set you free. Most of this depression we are having is because there is something you don't know. So you sit down there and think people are talking about you. What will they be saying about me? What will not they say? Do well, they will talk. Don't do well, they will talk. So be used to it and enjoy your life. You see what preparation does for you. So you create a system of joy that is independent of the things around you. And you become a motivated leader. And everybody looks at you and says, wow, this guy is a leader worthy of emulation. Then your ministry increases because you have learned how to motivate people into excellence. Say amen. You have to learn the principles of the kingdom. Very quickly, there are four areas still under the second point. There are four areas that you must work on. Four areas that you must work on. Number one, you must contend for a comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. Generally, as regards understanding the word of God and applying it. Understanding the word of God and applying it, you must contend for that mystery. You must know how to apply scripture to your life. If you want to be great, use your times of preparation to learn how to make the word of God work. Number two, you must contend for the secret to the anointing. In your place of preparation, you must find out. You cannot, um, it has nothing to do with ministry. You want to be great in life without knowing how the anointing comes, you are joking. So in your place of preparation, you have to find out. This anointing that has been responsible for the greatness of many, how does it come? Number three. You must find out principles of leadership and administration. I know you are a man of God. But you are going to have leaders. I know you are a businessman. But it will not always be popcorn forever. A day will come you have companies with offices. You must understand principles of leadership and administration. Number three, you must understand finances. You must, in your place of preparation, you must study finances. No matter how much of a man of God you are, a businessman, a father, you must, this is a tool. I'm mentioning for you the tools that you will use to fulfill destiny. 
you need it study on finances don't just be a money monger don't just be a hustler don't just be obsessed about money and business understand the system understand how this thing works understand the challenges the vicissitudes that surround it are we together number four the last thing you must understand is people and relationships people and relationships brothers and sisters if you don't understand people and relationships you will die like a chicken they asked bishop oyedeko years ago they said what's the greatest source of challenge and pain in your life he said people they said what's the greatest motivation in your life he said people do you know the reason for many discouragement is people what they have said the reason for your encouragement the same people you must understand people get my message understanding people mastering relationships and then the prophetic implication of association you have to learn that i got a book years ago that changed my life how to win friends and influence people by dale kennedy right it blessed me it opened my eyes to the psychology of human relationships it helped me understand people thoroughly to know how to relate with different kinds of people you need this in your life otherwise you will get a job and after two weeks you are angry with everybody because you will meet sarcastic people even as a man of God you are going to meet people in your church people who are very disloyal to you you need to learn what to do with them you are going to meet people who are very anointed but rebellious you are going to meet people who are very submissive but careless and less as fair all these people you have to work with them you get a job you are going to work with lazy people you are going to work with very corny people people who are corny they will bribe and kill you if need be for promotion you've got to understand the ethics of working with people maintaining relationships Number three, the last point, action. The last key to opening up your prophetic destiny is action. The power of action. So number one is an encounter with Jesus. Number two is the power of preparation. Number three is action. The power of sustained action. Now by action, I don't just mean movement action means the relevant steps that you take action takes courage write it down when you are about to take action over your life your business your ministry it takes courage to act brothers and sisters there are things you are going to be doing in your life you will be the first person to do it in your entire family it takes action it takes courage joshua chapter one he said be strong and of good courage nobody has ever gone to school in your family you are the first to do it there is fear i was i was talking with, i can't remember who i was talking with now we're discussing the subject of fear and i told him there are two dimensions of fear there is fear as a result of the presence of the spirit of fear there is fear as a result of stepping into the unknown you must distinguish them are we together now there is the fear as it is as the presence of a demon spirit you cast that one out god has not given us that spirit of fear but every time you are doing something new or something extraordinary that that ability to push through something that is new will bring fear it's not unusual there are many of us here who have gone through certain sustained seasons of preparation but action action are we together you are the first person in your house to get a job and for many months you have not submitted an application because you are used to everything being done free for you are we together you've not submitted any application and the lord is telling you stand up and go to benin and submit your application say ah god no 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 no. who is going to pay my money where am i going to stay you have to summon courage to get up and take bold steps in life are we together courage courage action requires persistence there are certain times your first step will be the wrong one but it doesn't mean you are wrong the step may be wrong but you are not wrong start the business start the church start the ministry 
action requires courage action requires persistence there is an ugly ideology in the church that the moment people start things and fail people rally around them are you sure it's God and they destroy people's destinies how many great businesses would have stood but for the advices from churches how many great destinies there are people who who left who left certain precious jobs that God gave them simply because of an advice if they are shouting at you like that is it worth it and then you leave it and now you are suffering are we together number three action requires a system now this is very important you don't just act carelessly you act based on a system you build a system you build a system around your action for instance when it's now time for you God has called you and God has anointed you and told you it's time you now sit down there, there is a system you can start a prayer group a prayer fellowship as God is bringing people they are getting healed they are getting blessed God is lifting you God is bringing people into your life most of the people God is bringing are not your members stop calling them your members and sons and daughters they are your leaders in the making are we together God never sends members he sends leaders they will come as drunkards they will come as troublemakers your assignment is to prove your apostleship make them become what you have seen in the vision they will not come ready-made action you must build a system around it we had a system like that when he and i was starting we'll get people born again there was a system you got filled with the holy spirit and then we were praying and so when people got born again in one week they were already on fire a system around your business you may now say okay let me now build a system i separate business money from my personal finances maybe i open an account for business i need to be serious now not that any money that comes is for the eating you don't know which one is for your shop which one is for you so you eat everything and then you calculate and say somebody is stealing somewhere no no so i remember hundred thousand enter why is there sixty thousand you ate it it's your account system all the great empires in the world all the great destinies that you see the uncommon lives in ministry in politics in influence in any area of life were built this way this is the way people become great they have an encounter with Jesus that encounter brings them to a submission to his values and the next thing they they plant themselves under a ministry or a platform or a spiritual family are, are you getting the progression now this so that when you get people born again you know what to do with them when people have an encounter with jesus the next assignment is to create a structure or plant them under the bible says they that be planted in the house of god they shall flourish in the courts of our god he said in old age they shall be fat and flourishing hallelujah just like you are seated now now you are hearing this you are taking steps based on what i'm teaching you will go back now and because there is an anointing upon what i'm saying you will not ignore it as you go back it will burn like fire in your spirit you will begin to make decisions that are consistent with it are we together now and you begin to see your life rise you begin to see yourself improve then you can know that I'm going to be a good man. Not just because I think I'm good. I have studied the system that makes men good. Then I know I'm going to be a blessed man. Not just because I hate poverty. I've studied the system. I know I'm going to be extraordinarily anointed. Not just because I'm, I want to gyrate myself. No, 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 no. I've understood the system. At that point, you can look at life and smile. It's called mastery. You can rise to a point where you look at life and smile. And know that I have a great destiny. I have a great destiny and you look at your life after 20 30 years and it's nothing short of a life of glorious impact on eagle's wings a book written by bishop david Oedipo, i think to celebrate the 30 years anniversary of living faith then or so i looked at everything the progression on how he started and i said this is it consistent i have studied many great men of god that's how they started Benny Hinn, Dr. Mike Mudok, 
Miles Monroe, all the great men that represent great mentors and fathers in my life. I look at their lives and I see consistently, consistently. There were times in their lives they were for many years. It's like things did not happen. Even living faith with the kind of speed that it is experiencing now, there was a time it was stagnated. So you find out because at this point your ministry is not moving. So you go back. What did they do? Oh, they fasted, they prayed, they met together as leaders, they readjusted certain things. Fine. Papa Ia Deboe, there was a time redeemed was doing well but it was stunted and God told him that redeem needed to get to all the nations but as it were redeem could not cross certain cultures it could not go beyond the south and he went to the Lord and then the Lord gave him a formula he gave him a secret let him know that when you are dealing with global leadership you must have respect for people's culture and ideology it's quite selfish to want people to completely bend to subscribe to your culture kingdom culture yes but your, your sociological culture and paradigm, it may not be possible with every place. And so he opened up and painfully created that flexibility. So you can see one redeemed branch that looks like a contemporary um, uh, uh, church and all of that. And then you see another redeemed branch, youthful, another redeemed branch, still, you know, holding on to certain values. He just focused on the core values that represented the foundation of the ministry to preserve it. But then gave the flexibility and now redeemed this everywhere. Festival of life in UK is a sieve. I mean, you see them everywhere there. France, everywhere redeemed because of that secret. You can now look at that. Why is my church not growing? Ah, and God opens your eyes through that light, and you now see it. Oh, the reason why my church is not growing is because um, I, I I hold on to my values, but probably I I impose every value, both spiritual, cultural, sociological, on people, and that value is restraining people. That may be just the key. You need to adjust, and then all of a sudden. You find out that your ministry becomes a habitable place for people. Action. Action. God is challenging some of us to take action. You need to take action over your finances. You need to take action. There are different action steps you can take. You can begin to read books every day. You can listen to messages every day. You can get up and subscribe to direct mentorship. As much as God grants you grace. You may need to settle down and tell yourself, I'm starting that business next month. I'm starting it. I have prepared. I have paid my price. I am starting it. I will start it. Or you can say this month of November is dedicated to scattering my CVs around. I will anoint it. I will pray. I brought it for miracle service. They have prayed for it. Now God is waiting on me. I will scatter it all around. Hallelujah. Action. We are enjoying koinonia today because of the power of action. We are enjoying what God has done today because of the power of action. Listen, when will the generations tied to your grace reap the benefits of the action you are taking or otherwise? Whether or not you move, time is moving. Whether or not you move, time is moving. It is important to move with it. Time is premium. The only way to redeem it is to use it well. You don't save time. You use it well. You redeem it by investing properly in it. Koinonia, I bring you a word today. There is a prophetic destiny for you in Christ. You have been escorting men. Some of you, after tonight, you've got to sit down. Brothers, look at me. After tonight, some of you, when you go back home, don't sleep. You need to carry a chair and sit down outside and just carry a clean sheet of paper and say what am I doing with my life this is not the way it's supposed to work you have been joking around your destiny you are getting old things are not working there is nothing working in your life finances you don't know anything about it fatherhood you don't know anything about it that sense of maturity leadership you've not built anything time is going you have to give yourself a sense of urgency a day will come God will demand accountability for the grace and the life and the power and the strength that he has given you he said i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh it's time for you to begin to study the bible 
it's time for you to begin to study the bible you want to become a great man of god you don't know the bible you're going to crash land you will be tired your members will be weary they will leave your church and go somewhere else simply because you do not have the word you are not instant in season he tapped elijah and said eat for the journey is far i want to round up are you preparing are you preparing for your life sister are you looking for a man or are you preparing for marriage brother do you want to marry by fire by force or are you preparing marriage means a wife marriage means children marriage means the troubles that can come from in-laws have you positioned your spirit to manage it marriage means leadership i want to start a business ceo ceo of what have you studied it I want to become a great man of God. I want to be president and founder or geo. All that one is stories. Uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Are we together? Listen. I made a decision years ago. Today now makes it, um, not today, but 2016 makes it uh, 14 years 14 years when I made a quality intentional decision now I'd been working with God I'd been doing certain things but when I made up my mind to do what I'm teaching you now 14 years ago so when you see this today it's a product of 14 years of consistency with the Holy Ghost there were many other things that had happened before that time but I made up my mind. I said, from today, I will not be irresponsible. From today. I started studying and making a decision over my finances and my journey 12 years ago. Two years after I started my journey with purpose, I started my journey with finances. Listen, not every time is conducive for everything. You must redeem the time. You hear me saying this thing redeem the time please don't let anybody just come to your house and come and waste your time with gisting and gossiping that does not make sense early in the morning you are supposed to be praying six o'clock there in your house because you stay in the same compound bros how you day then please please don't, what, what is that shout please i'm happy today's a glorious day take it easy Bros, you don't cook, you don't do this, just speaking, tell him, please, I plan to be a leader. Take it easy. All these your vulgar statements and the rest, I appreciate you, but take it easy. Don't come to my house and come and do everything you want to do. No. You behave. Action. You begin to dress well. You begin to be serious about your life. Are we together now? Yeah. Actions that reflect your destiny. You stop excessively spending money anyhow. These are action steps that some of you need to take. Make up your mind that from today, no fake life. I'm not ashamed. If all I can take is Gary now, I'm not going to say others are taking rice. Uh -uh. By God's grace, I will take Gary honorably. Any lady that cannot like me taking Gary now does not deserve to eat my rice with me. I will continue moving. No pressure. No pressure. God has given me two members. I will guard them jealously and teach them with all my heart and love them. No competition. Are we together now? I open an account. I'm saving. I am disciplined. Can't be a student and you are buying with one of 10,000, 15,000. It's not wise. You are destroying your future. That 15,000 can buy you a book. 15 plus one secret to a happy home. I think something like that. Uh, uh, Doctor, Mrs. Energy, 500 naira, 1,000. You change your life. Are we together? God blesses you with 10,000 naira. You go and buy materials and dress well. Dress well. You don't look irresponsible. Please, I'm challenging us. We are going to pray. But I need to be sincere with you. You look well. You dress smart. You start learning certain ethics. When you are going before the presence of a great man, you don't look foolish. You destroy yourself. Now you begin to learn that not every opportunity opens every time. There are some of you here, brothers, you don't have one good suit. One good suit. 
you can budget for it one good suit so that the day God opens a door you have something nice you keep wearing all these rags that people wear around looking like fools and then you smile around it no you will never be great that way are we together you come to a point in your life where you begin to act responsibly when you see ladies you respect them you don't talk like a fool speak everything and no 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 no. you act like you are preparing to get married there are some of you i see you you are still acting like children although you are matured you begin to act responsibly you see someone's child falling down you create a sense of responsibility oh let me help this person you are taking action that is opening doors for you you see a man that is anointed you don't just stand let's see what he's saying pastor Alpha, what does he even have to say no the law of honor see there is a way you look at someone you know he has grown up you know he has grown up are we together let's take steps for our destiny you may not like what I'm teaching you tonight but just like others who are saying thank you now you will say thank you tomorrow I guarantee you you may not like me for what I'm teaching you now because for some of you I'm challenging you listen there are some of you especially ladies because you are very beautiful your beauty makes it such that anybody who comes around you likes you so there's nobody to really tell you the truth my name is Joshua Selman I'm telling you you have to settle down and be serious with your life you cannot float around a destiny full of flattery somebody has got to tell you this is wrong this is right the person who challenges you is the person who loves you. God is using me to do for us now what some of us did not get at home. And I will do it well. You may not, if you like, don't hate me, no problem. But you will thank me tomorrow. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. Stop all this childish play. Stop all these, these irresponsible things people do around. Gossiping around, misbehaving. Some of you, are, you have already collected phone on credit. Go and return it. You don't need that kind of lifestyle. Oh, please, hey, Jimmy, uh, can I use your trouser for two weeks? No, you are, you are acting like a child. Can I use your shirt? I like your phone. Can you borrow me? I'm traveling somewhere. All these things are attitudes of children. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. I spoke like a child. Now that I'm a man, what do I do? I lay aside these childish things. Have you laid aside these childish things? Or are you just growing old? Maturity. Let me come into your room or your house or whatever and see it nice. I look at you and I see how careful you are. I don't come into your house and I see your fridge spoiled, your TV spoiled, your table dirty, your carpet dirty. And I just see you and you say, Ah, Apostle, you are welcome. May his presence. No, no, no. You are not showing responsibility. That's the same way you'll be an irresponsible man. The fridge will spoil you. Say my wife will fix it. You are not already assuming responsibility. God cannot give you a great ministry. You can't fix your fridge of 1,000 naira. You want to fix lives? No, sir. Are we together? You wear clothes that are torn and dirty. You don't care? No, sir. You have to behave well. Say in the name of Jesus. From today, I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny say it again from today I make up my mind that I will fulfill destiny give me two more minutes and then we'll pray how about bad friends I can't round up without talking about that show me your association and I show you your true values show me your association whether you went to the same primary school, secondary school, he was your chief, um, 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 your, your best man, whatever. <laughs> Service, love you, God. What does he say, chief bridesmaid? Praise God. All this solidarity to wrong friends, you've got to make up your mind. You see, I've been saying this thing. Do you know some of us, if only you can leave your bad friends, your journey to a good life starts? Especially for us ladies especially for us ladies you love god but the moment you meet them they come with their wrong ideologies and then they force you to have to believe it 
you just came back from church and now you are making up your mind I will be responsible and someone goes hey this day oh ladies can I sit down you know that's what you just repented of but because of the presence of that friend he said Todd just tell me and you now keep listening before you know it you go back to your vomit again may God deliver you this night the courage to let people know you are serious about your destiny see I don't know what is it this our ego thing is what we have refused to take out of the way if I tell this person sorry you are interrupting my destiny they will feel bad they will criticize me so what so what make up your mind are we together make up your mind this night in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ make up your mind and say things will change I pray that you will really change in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that you will really change in the name of Jesus Christ there are many other things we need to change about some of you have up to 20 relationships consciously you don't care to you it's a symbol that you are a fine girl say do you know all these guys are dying I guarantee you none of them will marry you for you to be that careless with your life they will ask you out but when they are ready to marry they will come to church the brother will repent and dress well and come and look for a quiet lady who loves God every man stupid or sensible wants peace in his house are we together yeah. so some of us pride ourselves there are good brothers coming they love God, they fear God, they are coming but you are there busy doing your emotional razzmatazz with all kinds of people, you are growing old God will open doors for the brothers the brothers you see today that cannot buy a good shoe they will buy what will open your mouth tomorrow and by that time they will not be ready to marry you they will marry people younger than you don't be angry, I'm sorry I'm saying this but I'm challenging you and brothers don't think what I've said now is a license for you to be foolish because some of you deserve no almost forever until you do something with your life please don't, don't ever use what I'm saying now as an endorsement to come and harass any lady if you don't merit saying any no um, they will bring you to me you are going to meet me somewhere in the equation uh, we will meet and I will tell you no no, you are not, you are not responsible enough it's as simple as that she may not have the courage to tell you but I guarantee you I will tell you you know why I'm doing this to you tonight I came with this spirit of fatherhood tonight because I, I want to challenge you you're on your way to better days you're on your way to better days every marriage you see here by God's grace, some of our people here who are gloriously married, there were steps they took. Some of the things you are seeing here, the lives that are successful in ministry, by God's grace, you belong to a ministry that God has helped. These are the things that we do. They are not what we are saying. They are things that we do. He said, that which you have seen me do among many witnesses, do also. Do also. Be serious with your life. I can count the number of times you will come to my place and find me sleeping, sleeping, snoring. Any time of the day, I'm awake doing something. There are sermons to prepare. There are videos to watch. I am, I am so passionate about eradicating my ignorance. So passionate. Never come for koinonia simply because you want to honor a religious ceremony. Hallelujah. This is not a church. This is a training ground where God is raising and building on common people. Men and women who will love His presence more than their lives. Men and women who love His glory. The Bible says the remnant of the house of Jacob shall bear root downwards. Men and women who will have a passion for God beyond their lives. I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. So all I want is you. I hunger and thirst. I hunger and thirst for you. In a dry
Ryan will be land for all I want is you. Is that your prayer tonight? Is that your desire in this place? We hunger and thirst for you. The Brian will be land all we want to see. Let that be a song from your spirit. Hey, we hunger and thirst for you. In the Brian will be land all we want to see. We hunger, we hunger, say, we hunger and thirst for you. Yes, Lord, why don't we be left? All we want. Just the voices, I like you to sing it from your heart. We hunger and we thirst. We hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land, all we want is you. Sing it from your heart. I hunger and I thirst for you. I hunger and thirst for you. In a dry and weary land, all, all I want is you. All I want is you. All I want is you. You are my life. You are my breath. You are everything I want. You are all that I see. You are all that's in my world. I love your word and I love your life. I live by your word. I live by your word. You are the hunger and the thirst inside of me. I'll spend my day seeking your presence. I'll spend my life running after you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. With everything I have. With everything I have. With everything I have. This is a piece of my passion for you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I serve you. I love you more than life itself. I truly love you. I love your way. I love your presence. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. I love you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I love your presence. Holy Spirit, you are my life. You are my breath. You are my joy. You are my song in the night. You are my song in the day. You are my song in the night. You are the reason why I live. You are the reason why I preach. You're the reason why I hear. You're the reason why I sing. You're the reason why I serve you. Maria, ma sheba na na ye na ma kaya na na. Sheba ya na 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 na. As the day passes for the world, so my soul longs after you. So my soul longs after you. I love you more than life itself. I worship you. Listen to this song with all my heart, with all my heart. I worship you with all my heart. I don't know if you really love the Lord. Let's raise our voices together. It's a very simple song. Hey, 
This is our testimony, O Lord. This is our testimony, Lord. We love you. We are that generation, O God. We will not disappoint destiny with all our hearts. We are that remnant that will come out of the house of Jacob. One more time. We worship you. The training must be hard. It may be hard, but we will go through it. The making of general. With all our hearts. One more time as you hold the hands of your neighbor, a fellow general in the army. Sing it from your heart. It's the anthem of the great one. We worship you. Just sing in the spirit, still holding the hands of your neighbor, expressing your love to his majesty. We love your presence, O oh God. We are not just looking to get things from you. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. With everything we have, with everything we are. We love you, Lord. Come on, sing in the spirit. That we love you. That we love you. Lord, we love you. 
Singing it to your maker, Lord. I will worship you. Nothing hand has made but you, Lord. Sing, I will lay down my idol. I will lay down my idol. Close I have made and all. Sing it from your heart to the Lord. Lord, I will bow to you. You know why. Hallelujah. Listen to me. When I began my pursuit for God, listen. I was not looking for ministry. I was not looking for prosperity. I was not looking for fame. I was not looking for influence. I was not even looking for anointing. I was not looking for title. I was looking for His presence. I wanted His presence more than my life. I wanted His presence more than anything. When I began to pursue Him, I didn't give Him conditions to serve Him. I told him, I said, Lord, if you will never bless me, I cannot leave you. We have conditional Christians. Lord, if you do this for me, I will do that. But one of the blessings of Koinonia is that you come to a point where you say, Lord, I lift away the conditions. I love you. I love you. The language of love for God is not a language that is understood by the body again. We teach on faith, we teach on mercy, we teach on goodness. But we do not teach on our love and our passion. There is need to restore a passion for God. I don't know what you look for every time you come for koinonia. Miracles, anointing. But tonight can you renew your passion for His presence? Oyedeko said, if you want to know the secret of my success, find out my heart beats for God. A.W. Tozer wrote in his book, The Pursuit for God. He said, the highest, singular, noble cause of any man is to pursue God. As the deep panted for the waters of my soul long after you. Make sure you are thinking of what you are singing. Do Alone, all my heart desire, and I long to worship you. Listen to me. Let me give you a revelation of this song so that you understand what the psalmist was saying. Hallelujah. The deer is a very fragile animal. Are you listening to me? Doesn't have so much strength of its own. It's a great prey to the lions and other stronger animals. Now listen to me. Very important. And every time... There is a secretion from the deer that attracts the presence of the predators and the animals that come to eat it up. Are you listening to me? And the only place of rescue is if it can get to the waters. Are you listening to me? And so, for the deer, water is a matter of life and death. This is why the psalmist is saying, as the deer pants, he's not looking for the water because he's thirsty. He's looking for the water as a matter of life and death. The Bible says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth to it and they are saved. So as you're singing and say, as the deer, you are comparing your pursuit for God to the deer's pursuit for water. 
if you don't mean it, don't sing it. That as the deer pants after the water, so my soul pants after you. For you, O oh Lord, are my heart, desire and I long to worship you. You, oh Lord, are my heart, desire and I long to worship you. It's a very simple song. I don't know if you know it. I love to worship. I love to praise. I bow before you. Lifting you high, I worship your holy name. I love to worship. I love to praise. I love to praise. I bow before you. I bow before you. Lifting you high. Lifting you high. I worship your holy name. I love to worship. I love to praise. You lifting you high, I worship your holy name. I love to worship, I love to praise. I bow before you, lifting you high for the last time. Hey, I love to worship, I love to praise. Hallelujah. Lord, let your word bless us tonight. We have come to receive. We have come to be changed. Let your word bless us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Just hug your neighbor and be gloriously seated. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you for coming. He will increase you and He will cause you to walk in glory in the name of Jesus. Joel chapter 2. Please bring out your writing materials. It's important that you come with your writing materials. Because you will need to write a lot of things. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the King of Glory. Lord, we love you. Joel chapter 2. If you are there, say Amen. Verse 4. The appearance of them is like the appearance of horses. And like horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains, shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoreth the stubble. Like a strong people set in battle array. 7. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk every man on his path. They shall walk every man on his path. He said they shall walk every man on his part. Tonight's teaching is very important. It changed my life years ago when the Lord opened my eyes to this revelation and I pray that it will change somebody's life tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
Tonight, I'm teaching on a very powerful subject. Walking in your purpose. Walking in your purpose. Walking in your purpose. The Bible begins to give us in the book of Joel a description of a great army. And the Bible makes us to understand that this army, they were like mighty men. They leaped upon walls. Hallelujah. The Bible says that every one of them, none broke their ranks. That every one of them walked in his path. Who are these men? This class of fearful people. Hallelujah. Every one of you say after me, I was born for a reason. Say it as loud as you can. I was born for a reason. I am not a biological accident. I am not one of the many people in the earth. I was born for a reason. I have an assignment. I have a mandate. I have an anointing. I have a destiny. The world is full of people who found themselves in the middle of time. They didn't know why they were born and they died without discovering why they came upon the surface of the earth. There is nothing as tragic as a man who lives upon the surface of the earth without knowing the reason why he was born and what he was mandated to do upon the surface of the earth. Take this very seriously. Purpose and destiny. Tonight I trust that God will open up our eyes and grant us the ability to walk in the path of our call, the path of our anointing and the path of destiny. Say amen if you believe that. Many of you have been praying and say, Lord, why am I here? Am I just here to escort others in destiny? The Lord has heard your prayer tonight. That's why I want you to be very attentive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, the word purpose means the intention for creating or manufacturing a thing. When you say the purpose of a thing, the intent, the reason why you manufactured that product. Please, if you are not writing, you can kindly ask your neighbor to help you with a sheet of paper or use the notepads on your phone. Just make sure you are writing. This is very important. Hallelujah. So, the purpose of a thing is the reason for its existence. The reason why it came. Are you listening to me? Everything. God is a God of purpose. Say after me. God is a God of purpose. Yes. He does not create anything for nothing. God is a God who is driven by purpose. And everything he creates is supposed to serve a reason. These amplifiers, these, these speakers are supposed to serve a purpose. The mic I'm holding is serving a purpose. Are you listening to me? The video camera is serving a purpose. The projector is serving a purpose. The worship team, they are serving a purpose. So, the purpose of a thing is the reason for its creation. The reason for its manufacturing. Hallelujah. It's important that we realize that God didn't just create man, listen to me, to walk upon the surface of the earth, get old, get married, give birth to children, go to church, go to the university, earn degrees, and die. That's a terrible testimony. And that's the testimony of many people. Many people. There are so many young people, even in Nigeria, they do not understand the purpose of...
their lives. They do not realize that they did not appear on the earth as a biological accident. I don't care how you were born. Are you listening to me? It's irrelevant how you came into being. The most important thing is that you are here now. Hallelujah. It's important for you to find the original assignment and the intention of God for your life. Do you realize that every one of us has an assignment earmarked by God? It has been predetermined. Let me tell you something about purpose. Purpose is not the same as ambition. Ambition is your desire. Are you listening to me? What you aspire to become by reason of your likes, by reason of um, your environment and whatever parameters you use. Purpose is the intention that God put in your heart to serve here in the earth realm. When he shot you as an arrow from eternity into time, he packaged you for a reason. I need you to understand that you don't create your purpose. You discover it. You don't create purpose. Let me show you. Hebrews chapter 10. Turn with me quickly to Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 7. If we can get it on the Amplified, that will be okay. Otherwise, any version. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 7. Who is there? Hebrews 10. Verse 7. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will. Listen. He said, then I said, behold, here I am coming to do your will, O God, to fulfill what is written of me in the volume of the book. To fulfill what? What is written. It has been written. You don't come and walk here on the earth. And then one day God just chooses and says, uh, What do we do with Bridget now? And then God just says, oh, yeah, You just manage here. No. Lo, I come. As it is written of me. Say after me, it has been written. Concerning my life. That's why I know you cannot be a failure. God cannot write failure about you. The Bible says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it has been written of me. The day you find yourself in the book, you begin to walk in the path of destiny. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? One definition of frustration in life is to Walk void of the knowledge of your assignment. You will waste energy. You will waste resources. Are you listening to me? We used to play um, a little game during break when I was in primary school. Now, primary school children play computer games during break time. But we used to play a game. I don't know how many of you did it. You People will walk around and you come. I pass here and what will you say? I pass here. That's how many people are doing in destiny. They just get everywhere. I like technical. I pass here and life will say what? No way. Hallelujah. And there are so many people escorting others to the place of destiny. God designed that you find fulfillment when you begin to walk in your purpose. Are you listening to me? Your joy is in your purpose. Your peace is in your purpose. Your prosperity is in your purpose. Your fame and your influence is in your purpose. And the danger is this. If you do not find it, you will live your life getting offended and angry at those who have found it. Because you will aspire to become what they already are. But you will find out that the road you are taking will always end you up in frustration. One more time, say after me, I was born for a reason. I was born for a reason. Many of you, as you are saying it, you are laughing at yourself. You say, me too. Yes, you. 
in Luke chapter 4 from verse 17 the Bible makes us to understand that Jesus do you realize, listen to me that Jesus was a non-entity until the day he found his purpose is in your Bible there was no there was no proof that Jesus was an important person that people loved him and valued him until the day when he found something Luke chapter 4 you remain a non-entity in life I don't care who you are I don't care how fine you are I don't care who your father is Luke chapter 4 verse 17 hallelujah are you there can someone read it for us please he said and there was handed to him the role of the book of the prophet Isaiah he said he opened the book and found the place hey, and found where the place there is a place for you and he found the place he didn't say he found a place he opened the book in the opening of the book he did what he found the place the place there is the place it's not a place for many people it's not a place for competition you know why there's so much competition because many people are trying to be what a few people who have found their purpose have become and the best you can become of another person is a second class of that person your originality is manifested when you find the place next verse verse 18 this is what Jesus found the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor he has sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed who are downtrodden, bruised crushed and broken down by calamity next verse 19 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord the day when salvation and the free favors of God profusely abound. Verse 20. Listen to what Jesus said. And he rolled up the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were gazing attentively at him. 21. And he began to speak to them and said what? Today. Your today starts when you discover purpose. Many of you are celebrating birthday. How, many, how old are you? 35. Alright, that's nice. But your today has not started until you begin to walk in purpose. He said today, this scripture has been fulfilled. In other words, I am come as a fulfillment of this prophecy. What prophecy are you fulfilling? Your walk upon the earth is supposed to be a fulfillment of a prophecy. Are you listening to me? What prophecy are you fulfilling? For many of us, all that we desire is to just say, Lord, bring a man now to marry me. Am I not getting old? And we believe that that is all to our lives. But I want you to know that there is more. Say there is more. Say I was born for a reason. Yes, you. Jeremiah chapter 1. Let's look at what God had to tell Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 4. Are you getting blessed tonight? Jeremiah chapter 1. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah saying. Now this was Jeremiah. He was a great prophet. Born to be a great prophet. Jeremiah brought the lamentations. And caused the nation of Israel to walk in the path of the Lord. But he did not know that that was his divine destiny in Christ. Until it was revealed to him. Verse 4. Okay, verse, verse 4 please. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, verse 5. Before I formed you. Can we read it together? One to read. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I separated you and set you apart, consecrating you, and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. 
He said what? Before your father and your mother came together. You see why I say you are not a biological accident? Because I don't care who your father is and who your mother is and how you came. He said before you were formed in your mother's womb. He said, I knew you. Oh, he knows my name. That's what the Bible says. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls and he hears me when Brother, do you realize that before you were born, it has been written concerning you? In other words, heaven met. Come on, let me have somebody, just anybody. Let me have somebody. Bridget, God bless you. That means, when it was time for Bridget to come upon the earth, the Holy Spirit didn't just go on an errand. And suddenly, he just found out that, ah, Bridget is coming. And he said, hey, what do we do? Let her just come. We'll find something. No, no. It was well calculated by heaven. They created a vacuum in the earth and planted Bridget to be the solution, that prophecy, to reveal that dimension of God. And they said, now you can go. And she appeared. But let me tell you something. Your coming upon the earth does not mean that you are going to walk in purpose. You must discover it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Years ago, I carried my Bible, I carried my jota, and I ran to the dam, ABU dam. Many of you only go there for picnic. We didn't go there for business. Destiny discovering business. And you go there, I will buy bones and yogurt, 30 naira, and bones. And I will sit down there and flog it out with destiny. And say, Lord, I cannot be a non-entity. There's got to be something about my life. My father didn't tell me what I was born for. Did your father tell you what you were born for? I hope you will tell your children what they were born for. Because it's the responsibility of every father. Before you get your wife pregnant, sit down and say, Lord, what am I doing? Who is coming? What is his destiny? That's what Manoah did. He called the angel. He said, come and tell us. What will be the destiny of this child and what we are supposed to do? And he said, he shall be a Nazarene. Let no razor touch his head. He shall be a judge over the house of Israel. Hallelujah. So when you realize that you were born for a reason, it will change your outlook about life. Suddenly, do you know that everyone was created with inferiority complex by default? I don't care whether your father is the president of this country. I have seen great people with inferiority complex. I've seen beautiful ladies, handsome guys with inferiority complex. I've seen millionaires with inferiority complex. Inferiority complex can be tried to solve. You can try to solve it with different things. But only your purpose kills it once and for all. So, you don't solve inferiority complex by prayer. You solve it by discovery. Are you listening to me? When you find your place, that I have a place in life, and that you have discovered it, and you will walk in that path. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that you have a purpose in Christ? How many of you believe you have an assignment? This discovery helps you because many of us have role models that are not in the area of our purpose and we are struggling and sweating. I must be a fashion designer. The grace is not there. It's not part of your job description in destiny. And you are suffering and sweating. I must be this thing. You are trying and somebody comes to work with ease with the grace that came upon his life. Are you listening to me? There are many of you, I must do music. This music is selling. I must do it. 
Nobody is buying your album. There are no helpers. There are no partners. No errands and all to hold your hand. You are suffering. Nobody likes what you are doing. You are saying, I must steal. That's the one I want. Tonight, I want you to know that your place in life is not determined by you. It's determined by God. So outside of God, there is no discovery of purpose. There is only ambition. Are you listening to me? The Bible says he opened the book and he found his place. Without the opening of the book, you will never find your place in life. There are so many people that have been crying, Lord, what am I here for? Let me tell you something. The danger of complex is unimaginable. If you think this message is not important, wait until you get out of this place and you will see how confused your life will be. Today you want to be like your brother. Tomorrow you want to be like this person. This swaying life, purpose gives you stability. Hallelujah. Very quickly, how do I discover my assignment? How do I discover my purpose? Now that you know you were born for a reason. I know that many of you have heard it, born for a reason, born for a reason. But it has not done on many of you that you should discover the specifics about your life. Don't say I'm too young. Joash was age 8 when he became the king of Israel. Number one, to discover your purpose. There are certain parameters that God has put together. Number one, your potentials. Say after me, potentials. The word potential comes from the word potent. That means it's inherent. An ability that has not been tapped yet. Hallelujah. Your potential is a pointer to your purpose. It's a pointer to your assignment. Your potentials are inherent abilities. Make sure you write the word inherent. They are not gotten by impartation. You came with it. Hallelujah. Listen, look up please. There are some of you here. From the day you were born. From the day you were born. As a baby. Every time you hear music. As a little child you just go and stand close to the TV. And if they want to take you away you are crying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From age 7, you started singing in children's choir. You were the youngest here. They couldn't stop you. Your parents refused that you would not go for Riaza. The moment they were stopping you, one uncle came and said, Lai Lai, I used to go and set the sound in the church. I'll be taking the person. Every time you turn towards that area, destiny seems to open up doors for you. Potentials. Hallelujah. From young, the leadership mandate, not just ministry mandate, not just apostolic mandate. Everywhere I went in my life, I was a leader. There are some of you like that. Class monitor, class one, two, three, four, five. You are the last one in your family, but your father will call you and say, we're about to make a decision. What do you think is making him do that? Hmm. Are you listening to me? Potential. Your inherent ability. Your inherent ability given by God. Many of you have seen it. It's glaring before you every day. What are your potentials? Don't say I don't have any. Are you joking? Let me list some of them for you. It will shock you. Because many of you do not think they are called potentials. There are some of you that are exceptionally beautiful. Ladies. What do you think that is? Potential. Do you know in the book of Esther, the nation of Israel was saved by the potential of beauty? There was no prophet that prophesied anything there. There was no man of God that turned snake into a rod or anything. It was a, the beauty of a woman took her to the palace. Are you listening to me? And she obtained favor and brought salvation to the nation of Israel. What of your creativity? There are some of you who are so creative. You have a thousand ways of doing the same thing. 
Are you listening to me? Creativity. Very important. Music for some of you. When we are suffering to train our voice, drinking ginger and honey, you take cold water, you break all the rules of music, but you sing well. You pitch to a point that you, even you, you are surprised. Let me tell you one proof that is your potential. There is ease and grace in that area. There is no struggle. You like it so much, even if they don't pay you, you do it with joy. While others are crying, you cannot believe that they are crying about this thing. Hallelujah. Every time you see Jimmy and, and um, assistant music director, David, every time you see them, give them one minute, they are playing a new song, and you see them laughing. I get so bored with what they are doing, but you see them nodding. I mean, they are just enjoying it. They say, have you had this? I just had this recent download by, by um, John Picky. And they are playing and dancing, you know, and just enjoying themselves and are leaping. I'm saying, can these guys get out of here? There are many of you, when you are about to sleep, and they just tune to a fashion channel, you just wipe sleep from your eyes, and you can sit down till the next day. While we are sleeping, then when they tune Benny Hinn, I'm watching, I'm happy, I'm laughing, you are angry because I'm not giving you room to tune to the channel. You are like, what is it? Benny Hinn, such a boring man. You are my hiding place. Yes, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Listen, I hope you are getting my point. There are many of you from the day you came to ABU, you love your class. Even when you finish exam, you just go and sit down there and you are smiling. And your colleagues, listen, 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 listen. Your colleagues do not even understand. Are you listening to me? You have started becoming ashamed. They've called you everything. Bookworm, prof. It's not like you like it. You can't stop it. Even when you are about to sleep, after 10 minutes, you just touch your book and just use your touch and glance through something briefly before you close it. And your roommate is saying, this guy is frustrating us. Could it be that there is a voice in prison crying inside of you, wanting to find expression? There are many of you who are leaders. When you were age 5, you were behaving as if you were 15 years old. When your colleagues are playing, you sit down and be thinking like this. Your father will say, what kind of stupid boy are you? Your colleagues are playing, eating sand. And he said, daddy, no, we can't eat sand. And your father is saying, Jesus Christ. I be this guy is the incarnate of one elderly man. You see a small... Have you seen little children like that? Very mature. Something touches their clothes and they are even cleaning it and they are careful. You want to go and bath them at age three or four. They are saying no. Say, just wait outside. You are like, what in the world is happening to this generation? Potential. Your ability. Are you listening to me? Your first assignment tonight is write the list of all your potentials. Write it. I wrote it. Hallelujah. I knew I had the call of God upon my life. I didn't know how it was going to start. And when God was teaching me this, all of this drama happened in the dark. God told me, write it. I said, sing it. Oh, then I had a beautiful voice. I had not laid it as opportunity cause for ministry. I had a beautiful voice. Hallelujah. But you can't serve two masters at the same time. Hallelujah. That's why God brought a beautiful worship team. If you preach the way I'm doing, your voice cannot be smooth. Hallelujah. And I wrote singing. And then I wrote teaching. Oh, I love teaching. I love teaching. I can sit down. Do you know I was so obsessed about teaching? I will soon reveal many of your secrets to you. I will lock myself sometimes in the room. And you imagine yourself teaching. How many of you? And you teach so well. And now, my own is not teaching in class. I'm teaching the world. And I'm teaching. And I imagine myself talking to people. And I tell you, as I'm doing it, the anointing of God comes truly. As if God is not playing. Say, if you like, be playing. You are doing rehearsal. Do you know this is how I learned how to preach? I would stand at the foundation. We had one empty foundation in our house. 
They wanted to start a construction. They're very, and I'll stand. And I'll imagine a crowd of people. And I'll tell them, turn with me to the book of this. Little did I know I was killing the bear and the lion in the wilderness. Many of you, every time you're in your room, you just lock your room and put two chairs. And you say, um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're on to ministry today. Aha. Uh -huh. Many of you are saying, hey, it's not word of knowledge. It's word of wisdom. I know it should happen to you. Hallelujah. And you have passion. Every time you tell your roommates, they laugh at you. But there is something crying inside of you. The next thing, your passion. Your passion. Your passion. What is it that you would do if you were not paid? There are many of you that love some things. It's not the issue of money. There are things in my life that I do with passion. For instance, what I'm doing. Oh boy, I can preach till tomorrow morning. I tell you, if I'm tired, it's just for your sake. I can preach till morning. Once you make a mistake of giving me this mic, even if you don't give me a Bible, God recorded small of it in my head. And that one that I have, I will preach it out. Sometimes when I'm going for night vigil, people just pity me. I say, are you joking? I'm enjoying myself seriously. The exact same feeling you receive in the kitchen is what I'm receiving now. Hallelujah. Passion. What do you have passion for? Do you realize that many of you are doing things you don't have passion for? You are angry. You are frustrated. Stop it. You must not do it. You are doing it because you belong to friends who are doing it. Hallelujah. Stop frustrating yourself and begin to pursue the areas that you have passion because there is grace there. The last point, discovering your purpose. Steps to discover your purpose. The last point is the place of your pain and your anger. The place of consistent pain and anger. Everywhere you keep receiving consistent pain and anger, there is an assignment there for you. Are you listening to me? Moses, the, the grace for a deliverer was upon him. And when he saw that his people were being oppressed, what happened? He was angry to a point that he killed a man. Later in the years, he would be the deliverer of those people. There are things that make me angry. I hate it when I see that people do not love God. I hate it when people disrespect God and don't have a passion for the things of the Spirit. I hate it when people do not live by the principles of the kingdom. I hate it when Satan oppresses people. I hate seeing sick people. I hate poverty. I hate poverty with my life. I hate the effect it has created on people. I hate the effect created on society. My anger, my pain. Many of you have been rejecting your pain. Will you go back and revisit your pain right now? When you were young, you were abused. When you were age 12, you were You hate men. You hate everybody. Would it be that there is an assignment for you there? Are you listening to me? There are many of you who just sit down and you get concerned about people's relationship even if it's not your business. They have insulted you. You are tired. You have gone to repent before God but you find yourself there again. Could it be that you have the grace to be a life coach to help people? Hallelujah. There are many of you, when you were born, anything they give you, you give it out. Anything. They give you sweets, you are crying, but you give somebody else. And your mother will call you and, and slap your head and say, Oh, Lord, no, I'm, I'm training a dull child. And you cannot even help it. Could it be that you are a kingdom financier? Could it be that there is grace for you to release and equip the body? Your pain. What have you gone through in life? Do you think it's a waste? Are you listening to me? Your pain has grace. Let me tell you something about pain. Every time you conquer a situation in the spirit, authority is given unto you to bring others out. So Moses feels the pain and the tragedy. 
That's why, see, I went, many of you don't know why I, I, I trust God and contend for the anointing for miracles and to heal the sick. I went to, I've shared with you the challenge I had. Look, I've gone through sickness in this my life. Many of you say, what kind of, yeah, now every time miracles, it's not your fault. The day you are sick and the doctor tells you they cannot do anything about your situation, you will see the relevance of what we are doing. Hmm. Hallelujah. Grace. Your pain can become the testimony. So write your pain. What are the things you have gone through in life that you are angry about? This is a workshop tonight. Make sure you are writing, please. What are the things you've gone through? There are many of you who you have suffered inferiority, you have suffered complex to a point that you don't know what to do with yourself again. Could it be that you are sent as a deliverer to many like you? Hallelujah. Where are the next Steve Jobs, Warren Buffett, the next world changers who will take this kingdom for the king? Your purpose. Have you discovered your purpose? I read that book by Dr. Miles Munro, Discovering Your Potentials. It changed my life forever. I started getting angry with my life and I said, Lord, I cannot be like this. I cannot be like this. I gave myself a time space that I must discover why I'm on earth. I refused to celebrate my birthday. I told myself until I discover my call. There are many of you, you have the biggest party and you don't know why you are on earth. One year before your birthday, you have started planning. As soon as you finish this one, you are, you are planning the next one. You, you handle drinks. You, you handle the hotel we are booking. And you have no idea while you are dancing, whether it's Christian or secular, that's not my business. So long as you do not, you have no right to celebrate your birthday until you have discovered why you are living. There are many guys that don't know what they are on earth for. And your eyes will not allow ladies to move peacefully. Any lady you look, you are just smiling. Do you not realize that she's supposed to be a help me? When you are going out with her, where are you going? To where? We are going out ahead to where? Do you know where you are going? Take what I'm saying seriously tonight. Do you know where you are going? Hallelujah. The first thing God did is to reveal his assignment in the garden. Then when Adam began to walk, God saw a need for Eve. Guys, if you have not discovered your purpose, I tell you, relationship will kill you. Because you will not have direction. A day will come, there's nothing to talk about again. You have talked about all the cartoons, you have talked about the lady's hair. What else do you talk about? The lady keeps asking you questions you cannot answer. So, where are we going? So I can start planning my life in light of where you are showing me. And you say, let's just be going. Even Abraham, God told him, let's go. Hallelujah. Discovering your potentials. Listen. When you discover your potentials, in it, you will find your uniqueness. This is the secret of self-confidence. Your uniqueness is not in your similarity with others. I mean, your, your, your greatness in life is not in your similarity. I'm not the only preacher in the world. But there's nobody that does it like me. I have my way of doing my thing. Hallelujah. I have found my place in the ministry. I'm fulfilled in finding my place. I'm exploring the paths that God has earmarked for me. Many ministries are frustrated because they do not have vision. 
they don't have purpose and so they are trying to do everything that's why you see all kinds of people today they are apostles tomorrow they are prophets later on they say kai is it that i'm an evangelist i'm not very sure they are everything you tell him what are you, you say i'm a multiple talented minister what is the meaning of that hallelujah you find people in life let me tell you something you cannot be everything many of you have written what you want to do and what you want to do is what the whole world will be doing you will die you better cancel it and find out what god wants you to do say i was born for a reason listen to me you are sitting down to to listen to me by grace because i discovered my potentials are you listening to me can we sit down tomorrow and listen to you because you have discovered your potentials when I was in the dam crying and praying, there was nobody. Nobody was calling me Apostle or Joshua Selman or whatever. But I knew that that discovery held the key to the fulfillment of my life. I tell you, I live a fulfilled life. I have not started the journey yet, but I am enjoying the fulfillment. To be in the heart and the center of what God wants me to do. No competition. That's why I don't have enemies in my life. When I said, are you joking? Your enemies are the people you have been trying to... You are angry because they are walking in their path and then you are, you are wondering what to do with your own life. And every time you see them, their zeal frustrates you because they are committed to do some things and you are wondering, why am I not having that same kind of zeal? When you find out your assignment, I tell you, you will not sleep because of it. Hallelujah. When you discover your potential, when you discover your abilities, they are pointers to your destiny. Although discovery and revelation is progressive, but when you have the tools, it begins to guide you. Are you listening to me? It begins to guide you. If you see someone holding a stethoscope, who is that? You cannot say that's a carpenter. Are you listening to me? A carpenter has nothing to do with a stethoscope. When you see someone holding a scissors, holding needle and thread, who is that person? That's a tailor. Is that a caterer? So when you begin to gather your tools, what happens? It begins to give you direction. When you put those tools together, you find out that these tools are leading me to the ministry. They are leading me to the ministry. Every time you stand and you see sinners, you cry. Whenever you watch Reinhard Bonke, you cry. Something in you. Every time you see Jake's on stage, something tells you, there is a place for you in destiny. There are many of you, every time you see me preach, something in you tells you you will be standing to hold this mic like this. Every time I'm shouting it, people are laughing, but you are not laughing. There is something attracting you. Years ago, every time I saw Benny Hinn and I saw certain ministers of God, sometimes I will go back crying. I will, how many of you have had that kind of feeling? You will cry for days, you cannot tell exactly why you are crying. But you are crying anyway. It's a cry of passion. You must discover your purpose. When you discover your, your potentials, what do you do? Listen, the next thing is you begin to develop it. Develop it. Develop it. Refine it. I beg you, take what I'm teaching you tonight seriously. Develop it. Develop it. The process of developing your potentials is a very difficult process. This is where the boys are separated from the men. Because we live in a generation where many people do not want responsibility. We believe that God is supposed to do everything. But the moment, let me tell you something. That when people say they are idle, it's because they have not found what to work on. Your purpose will occupy you 24 hours will pass, you will not know. There are some of you, when you sit down and there is, you have written over five books. When you sit down writing it, you sit down by 4 a.m. in the morning. And when you check the time, it's 8 p.m. in the night. And your colleagues come and say, you are here, passion. Passion is dangerous. It, it brings obsession. You cannot stop Hallelujah. Develop it. 
Say in the name of Jesus. Say it as loud as you can in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to develop my potential. See, men of purpose are not people who are idly wasting their time. There are many people, let me say it again, there are so many people wasting their time every day. Visitation to visitation, room to room. Your job is, you don't know what to do with your time. You are just moving. If they say, where are you going? They say, let's go to this place. You say, okay. When you are a man of purpose, there is direction in your life. You value your time. You know that your time is precious. The greatest gift God gave you aside from His Son and the Holy Spirit is the gift of time. Every other thing you will do is in time. Many of us sit down and you are sleeping from morning till night. You just check and say 5 p.m. Ah, ah, which kind of siesta did I have today? Purpose will occupy you. Your purpose will help you to know the kind of books to buy. Listen, many of you have made friends with people who have broken your heart because you do not know your purpose. When you find your purpose, you will see a group of people that you belong to. He told, he said, when you go, you will step into a band of prophets and you will begin to prophesy like them. Many of you do not know the kind of groups to belong. Even in church, many of you don't know what departments to serve in because you do not know your purpose. Many of you don't have friends today because everywhere you're going, you don't fit. When you step into the place that has the oil of your purpose, you will fit perfectly. That's why many of you got into mistakes in your relationship and got into big trouble. You know why? Because for many people, out of that desperation, to find a friend that can appeal to you, suddenly you just see a brother. How great he is. He just ad lips and something attracts you. And then you misunderstand that attraction and you land into trouble. Are you getting me? When you discover your purpose, see, the moment you begin to develop your purpose, you begin to develop your potentials, self confidence begins to come. Not pride, self confidence. Suddenly you find out that I used to be afraid of telling people where I'm coming from. I used to be afraid of telling people my father was a carpenter. Now it doesn't matter anymore. Let me tell you something. When, you know, when I was in primary school into secondary school, there's a hairstyle, punk. How many of you remember? Punk. If the barber messes up that punk, he can spoil your face. And the ladies will not like you. So then, because we did not discover our purpose, that was our obsession. When you go to the barbing saloon, the barber better don't play with you. Especially when it's time to go to the church. The pastor's daughter is there. There are many VIPs there. You can't go and mess up yourself. But when I began to walk in purpose, I just found out that I'll go to the barbing saloon and I'm thinking, I'm just telling the guy, just clean my hair, make it nice. There are many things that are occupied. Do you know that many things you think about is because you don't have any other thing to think about? When you truly are occupied with purpose, you just stand and say, ah, am I sure it's my, it's, my, it's my shoe? Many of you are too meticulous. Guys carry comb in their pocket. You are moving and you carry nonsense when you find purpose. Even if your head is scattered because you are thinking, it will not matter again. Yes, I will say it again. Yes. See a guy behaving like a lady just be nice. Yeah. Uh-uh. Hallelujah. Purpose. When you find your purpose, you are grateful to God. You live a life of gratitude. You stop being angry. Let me tell you something. When you find your purpose, your potentials, your place in life, do you know what it will do to you? It will make you to honor and value those who have found their own. Because you will see that it's not child's play. Many people disrespect the anointing upon people because you have not found your place. So you don't know the level of discipline that it takes to get to that point. When you see the minister sit down, it's easy to look at them and say, I beg you, Jare. This guy self. Oh, I have the ability to do that same kind of thing. Because, you know, when God calls you, you feel you are calling to the ministry. You touch three or four people, they fall. You say, ah, ah, it's just not doing it. Then, as you begin to progress in purpose, when you begin to encounter certain things, hallelujah, 
and you begin to pray and build yourself. And after praying for hours and building yourself, you will see only grace you are seeing in the life of the people. You will start respecting them. And say, so uneasy lies the head that wears this crown. Let me give you a little story about us. Do you know we don't watch films? There are only few times. Even these days we start watching Christian films. It's not like it's a taboo. It's the sacrifice for the anointing. You come to visit me, you will watch worship songs and messages and you will read books and you will be tired. No wonder you are antisocial, but we are still anointed. Are you listening to me? When you discover your purpose and you begin to walk in it, I tell you every day as I progress in ministry, every day I keep saluting the fathers of faith that have gone ahead of us because I know that that's not business. Managing people, becoming successful is one thing. Managing success is another thing. When you become a minister, everything about your life is a subject of discussion. It takes stamina and audacity to move through. Are you listening to me? When you begin to walk in purpose, you will respect people. Suddenly you will turn. As you are becoming a man, you will turn and look at your father and say, Hey, so this is why my father used to shout. He's really not a bad man. Now that I'm becoming a man, I'm finding out that there are responsibilities that can make men become Draculas. So that's why my father has become what he is right now. Shouting and yelling at everybody. Now you are collecting money from home, many of you. Mommy, give me this. Daddy, give me this. The moment you step into responsibility for yourself, suddenly you get up and find out that nobody is going to send you money. And you drop an application for a job. And maybe the job is not coming. And you sit back. A brother calls you and says, Sorry, brother, can you send me 2000 At that point, you start having a foretaste of what your father is going through that you are insulting him for. Listen, discovery of purpose makes you respect people. Are you listening to me? If you do not discover purpose, you will never honor people who have gone ahead of you because you will trivialize their sacrifice. You will trivialize it. You are insulting your father for not having a jeep, but he has a house that you are inside. The day you are about to get married, and you go out, you have your money, but you can't find a house, you will salute your father. Are you listening to me? The day they make you a class monitor, and your class members want to beat you because you did not advocate for them, for assignment, you say, oh, so what of those who are leaders over thousands? Many of you who sit down and just wish and say, Hey, I wish I was Joshua Selman speaking to hundreds and thousands of people in Kono. This guy is enjoying, you know, they are giving him water. Please come and sit down and take the water. I promise you, listen, I give you three days. You will cry and run with my anointing and bring it back and give me. I promise you. Hallelujah. You see, John, for prophesy and you are laughing. Cry. How can he know about your life? The day you tell somebody something and they lock you for it, that day you will say whether you really want to be a prophet or not. Are you listening to me? Discovery of purpose makes you to honor the grace upon people. Every day, I keep respecting. Let me tell you something. My outlook for my father and my mother changed. When I started taking responsibility for my life, I knew it was not child's play. With all the tongues I'm speaking, with all of this, I said, so now, they were not filled with the Holy Ghost. They were not praying in tongues. They are not hearing what you are hearing, but they try to do what they have done. Many of you, after now, you need to go and send text messages to your parents and tell them you love them and you respect them. You have been insulting them and say only 10,000. He's not ashamed. His mate, the Elufa is his classmate. Okay, very soon. Say you have told your father you marry in two years. Very soon. You will see what it means to be a man. You will see what it means to be a woman. Many of you who stand and speak to your mothers and just insult them and say, Mommy, let me tell you, I'm not a small girl again. No. Please don't insult. I will wash you now. 
a small child poops in front of you and you're like, ah, ah, and you want to be a mother. Huh. Welcome to the world of reality when every childishness is washed away by time and wisdom. Hallelujah. Are you getting me? These messages that I preach are hard messages. But they are messages for those who are interested in their destiny. Not everybody likes me. And I understand that. But if you will listen. Let me tell you something about a life. There is a difference between teaching and training. Are you listening to me? A teacher can share. But when you are being trained. When you are being coached. That's not the time to pamper you. Are you listening to me? That's not the time to pamper you. A coach presses you to bring out the best in you. And then when it's time for the race and you take first position, the sower and the reaper are both happy. Many of you may say, why is this guy always shouting? His messages are always hard. You will appreciate it. When you step out and see the difference between you and others, you will thank God for this word you are receiving today. Are you listening to me? You are receiving it free. But let me tell you, those who are not receiving it today will pay for it tomorrow. It will not be as free as it is today. Are you listening to me? They will pay for it. And many will pay. I'm not talking of paying with money. They will pay with time. They will pay with their tears to receive some of these truths. Say, I was born for a reason. I was born for a reason. I always told myself this. There is something about my life. I'm not a non-entity. I'm not a non-entity. Today when I confess it, I know it is true. Look at what the Lord has done in my life. Do you know, every time I'm sharing with you this to the glory of God, I have seen the honor of God in my life. I have seen the blessings of God. I saw my head boy today. He was two years my senior. When I was in SS1, in secondary school, he was the senior prefect. I saw him today. I saw him on bike. And he was just running and he was going to discuss with somebody. And tears filled my eyes. I think it was Ike who was driving me. I said, once upon a time, this guy was my head boy. Today, he calls me sir. What takes a man from a place where he is nobody? Are you listening to me? To a place of prominence. The Lord has honored me in my little life. Within this country, outside this country. I have seen the mercies of God. I have seen the grace of God. The things that people run after God has honored me with. This is what I want your life to at least become. My greatest goal is for the least of you to be better than me. There is no reason why you should be the same as me. If you become the same as me, I have failed. My prayer, my cry... Every time I pray for you, I say, Lord, let the least among us be as great as them. I hope you appreciate what you are receiving. You see, let me tell you something. There are many of you that do not know the sacrifice of bringing the word of God to you. It's easy. Speakers are all arranged. Are you listening to me? Chairs are arranged. All people pray. And you just come in and stroll in and sit down. Let's hear what he has to say. Ah. In the days of Samuel, when the word was cast, many of you, God is intercepting your life because you did not receive this training from home. Many of you came from every different kinds of backgrounds, but God is intercepting your life to change you. I hope you value it. I hope you take it serious. My son, the Bible says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Years ago, let me tell you this. I shared with some of my classmates what I'm sharing with you. Many of them laughed at me. Many of them thought we were just being ambitious and being stupid people. Today, by the grace of God and the sure mercies of David, the gap between me and my contemporaries is far. By far. Are you listening to me? Everything I spoke and I prophesied, I have seen a major part of it today in my life. That which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled, of the word of life we declare unto you. In 2006, when we were leading a people for crusade, 
they insulted us they called us all kinds of names but by the grace and the mercy of god today you are a proof of our apostleship if it is true that we are called if it is true that we are anointed you are the testament of the fact that god is at work in this place. but tomorrow it will be your turn are you listening to me tomorrow the stage will be opened and it will be your turn to bring the word of the lord to the nations in ministry in business in life whatever you are going through today endure it develop your potential don't be too quick to start manifesting uh-uh, uh-uh. david killed the bear he killed the lion but he went back to the secret place do you know compared to where god is taking me i am still under rehearsals i keep telling people i'm still under training you have not seen the best of me yet uh-uh what you are seeing today is the prophecy of yesterday tomorrow you will know what i'm speaking today i've seen many of you have seen yourself in visions every time you sleep you see yourself a leader over others a ministry over churches there are many of you here there are churches and ministries apostolic ministries prophetic ministries music ministries financial ministries businesses locked up inside of you waiting for manifestation there are many of you you are the next media moguls you are the next oprah winfrey's and the rest you are the people who will come and interview us you are the ones who will change the course of history do you believe this about yourself i am motivating you tonight we are going to pray and that prayer is a cry you are going to say lord help me i don't care whether you are young or old many people covering their purpose hear me friends if you do not discover your purpose you will join the queue of frustration that is going on in nigeria many jobless people parading the streets of nigeria they graduated with first class they graduated with two one They have nothing to do with their lives. I hope you know, listen to me. I hope you know many of our parents who are suffering today, they, they are filled with the Holy Ghost. Hello? But in spite of their being filled with the Holy Ghost, in spite of their Bible study, they are still suffering. Pastor Chris said something that I respect so much. He said you cannot pack in the same parking lot of your parents and expect a different result. That's why God is intercepting your life. I made up my mind that I was not going to follow the road of a failure. Are you listening to me? Right now is the time to sow. The Bible says, He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds. Listen, what will kill many of you is convenience. You like convenience too much. That Christianity of... Un- I'm, not say, I'm not against comfort, but let the days come. Many of you see me wearing suits today and you want to go and buy my kind of suit. Find out what I was doing when I was... I say it with all humility. You see ministers stand and you want to do what they are doing. You want to eat food in Shagalinku. Instead of you to carry that 500 naira and buy a book. Do you know one of the biggest problems we have in the church? Our fathers have lied to us. They have refused... Listen... They have refused to open up their clothes and show us their scars. They hide their scars and they tell us just speak it and it will happen. But I'm not hiding it. I hope you appreciate it. Many people lie to you. They say, ah, I've never suffered in my life. I just moved and things began to happen. Hallelujah. Are you joking? Are you playing? For there is a scar. Paul said, let no man trouble me for I bear in my body. There is a mark that you receive now. Even Jesus Christ has the mark that brought him greatness. Those scars are still in his hands. Don't be ashamed of your scars. Don't let new creation teaching make you fool yourself and be ashamed of your scars. Many of you, because of your testimony, you drink Gary, keep drinking it and say, my life is better. There is something in my life. I cannot afford it today. I'm not ashamed of my one trouser. I will not be covetous. No, no. I cannot afford 300 naira cream. I will use the homemade Vaseline. But as I'm using it, I'm saying, Lord, I thank you. My destiny, 
will blossom and will show up one day. If you came tonight to hear a word that would change you, this is it. I'm preaching tonight from the depth of my heart. And I hope you appreciate what I'm telling you. You may not be able to make your hair. Don't envy anybody. You don't know how they got there. Just pay the price. Pay the price. He that weepeth, bearing precious seeds. I made up my mind 10 years ago that I was not going to be poor. So don't see me today and some of the blessings that God is helping me. I didn't make the resolution last year. You will frustrate yourself if you want to be like me in three days. Are you listening to me? Somebody came to T.D. Jakes and said, I want the anointing upon your life. He said, you are such an influential man. New York's best time, a bestseller. I want the anointing on your life. And he nailed down. And T.D. Jakes says, Lord, send him tribulations. Lord, send him persecutions. For every time you ask God for the throne, you will see a Goliath standing in front of you. If you cannot kill that Goliath, you are not going to the throne. I assure you, friends, many people will speak against the message I'm teaching you today. And they'll say, I'm not helping you. But the future will tell. Are you listening to me? We are going to pray, but let me just land something in my spirit. Pay the price. I do not see many people who are paying the price. Many of us don't pay the price in the place of prayer. Many of us don't pay the price in the place of duty. How many of you, you said God has called you to be a kingdom financier. How many books on finance have you read? I assure you, I don't care if a gallon of oil is poured on your head. You will never become a millionaire God's way. No, sir. It doesn't work that way. You want to get married next year. How many books on fatherhood have you read? How many books on godly parenting have you read? Am I challenging you in this place? You want to get into a relationship? How many books about men have you read? You think a man is another woman? God has told you you are a leader. Why don't you become an uncommon leader? Go and goggle principles of godly leadership. Buy tapes. Buy books. You are sitting down, mid-semester break. You hear that there is a leadership summit happening in Abuja. Quickly, carry your remaining 3,000 and run there. Go and sit down quietly. And listen to generals of the faith speak. Before you criticize them, listen to them. You have not gotten to where they are getting, so shut your mouth. And just listen first. No matter how much mistake they are making, it's not by trial and error they establish those levels of grace. You have something to learn. Are you listening to me? Sit down under that anointing. See, many of you, I, let me tell you something. There are many of you who, I pray that you don't regret the opportunities you have today. Are you listening to me? Sometimes you see the ministers, they wear jeans like you, they laugh like you. Be careful so you don't get too familiar. You are not standing in the same realm. If I were you, I would run one day and pin one minister and buy him Zobo and say, teach me something about leadership and refuse Say, I will not let you go. Many of you don't know how to press for your destiny. Are you listening to me? Go around Zaria, go and go. go. Who are the ministers and the leaders that have displayed the quality of what you want? God has told you you are going to have a miracle ministry. You are just sitting down and lying down. You think the Holy Ghost will come upon you just like that. Hallelujah. Many of you may need to contribute money. You and your roommate contribute money and buy my TV. And put in your room. People say, ah, enjoyment. You know what you are pursuing. Are you listening to me? You are not dressing well. You have one shirt, but you have a set light and you have a TV. People say, what kind of enjoyment is that? You know what you are pursuing. While those messages are playing, you are saying, Lord, I receive. There is grace I receive. Are you listening to me? Go and buy tapes, buy MP3s, worship people. Refuse average in your life. Refuse it. From class, run and go somewhere. See, I challenge you. See, I am on my knees begging you. Listen to me. I'm on my knees begging you. If you take what I'm saying seriously, you will be a champion in life. But if you play with what I'm saying, you will see how messed up your life will become. Hallelujah. I'm preaching tonight from my heart. That which I have, I give unto you. Enough of failures in life. It takes sacrifice. 
you will cry oh let me tell you i'm not the kind of person that will preach that gospel to you your crying is not because you are backsliding he that weepeth bearing precious seeds you are holding your seat lord enough is it's not much that is coming but i will keep giving i will keep tithing i will support your house lord just one shed but i will give i have two shirts but i will still sow one lord i am serious i am diligent in the place of prayer people may insult me but i continue my roommate said i don't have perfume my body is smelling but let me be a prayerful smelling person i am still praying oh lord i keep praying and then your glory will break forth like the morning and you will rise a day will come everything you are longing for you will get it at a platter of gold did i ever know that a day will come in my life when i'll not need to think of what to eat again those days are here are you listening to me the car you don't have today stop admiring and claiming cars sit down and start working on yourself every car that pass i claim it far 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 foul that gospel that they taught you better repent of it this night that's covetousness not claiming you sit down and partner with the Holy Ghost and you will become a champion. Stay with your Bible in the place of, of, of sacrifice. Listen, I want to see a situation where from tomorrow morning, from this night, all of us are working. Wake up in the morning. Write something about your life. Don't waste your time. Anything your enemy is the person that comes to distract you. Don't be afraid to tell people now is not the time to gist. You are walking. When you are walking, somebody just comes, ah, I go. You just smile and tell them sorry, but I'm doing a little work. And I say, eh, stupid people. They always try to claim they are serious. If you are ashamed of your reputation, you will not be great in life. You must die to be a champion. Great men are those who have died in themselves. Paul said, I die daily. Hallelujah. One last point to discovering your purpose is service. You will never be a leader until you become a good servant. Many people see me today and think I was just crossing my legs. And then the anointing just came. Bam! And God said, just get up. Here is suit. Wear quickly and start ministry. You think so? I shared my story. When I used to play, there's a man called Reverend Emmanuel Amechi. I don't know where that man is. Power Praise Chapel there, his church. I used to play keyboard for him. 1996. I would play keyboard for him. Let me tell you something. The only thing I remember them doing for me once was during the launching of, his, uh, of this. They gave me one cassette and one Fanta. That's the only thing they did. For those of you who do something, say the way we are singing, we are, we are serving in Koinonia Austin, they are supposed to be paying us. So, say you are rich, leave. Please leave. We are looking for serious destiny. Don't you know that you are learning your destiny free of charge? See, you kill yourself, and it happens a lot to musicians. You have not gone anywhere, you are saying they should pay me. Don't you know that you are learning? Hallelujah. When you find yourself serving in a church or in a body, never complain. See it as an opportunity to learn. It will give you discipline. Are you listening to me? Discipline. You cannot be a leader until you are a good servant. You must be able to serve. You will learn the discipline and the regiments of service. Many of you, as you are serving, one day they will give you, they will give you an opportunity. They will say, now, um, Josiah, please help us to lead prayers five minutes. That will be the first time you will be uncovering the grace of God upon your life. You who has thought that you are not anointed, that day you just stand. Five minutes prayer. You change the atmosphere. Suddenly, it leaves you with a question. How many of you has that happened to? Your faculty fellowship. They just say, there's a choir. Uh, Femi, just lead uh, 20 minutes praise and worship. And you lead praise and worship. And people dance. After the choir, they keep singing your song. And then you start discovering that there's something about you. Service. Service is the place of discovery. Many of you who are not serving in the house of God, you call that smartness. You are cheating yourself. You learn a lot of things. Are you listening to me? You serve God. Take responsibility for your life. Stop insulting your father and mother. 
and say, my father was smarter, I'll be better. If my mother was this, I'll be better. If they were sending me more pocket money, no. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Stop living a realm that you have not yet gotten to. You will get there. Ladies, you will not have to change your withdrawal every two, two days. You don't have that kind of money. Stop frustrating yourself. A day will come, you will own a boutique. You will own a spa, a spa center. You can change your hair every day. Stop killing yourself right now. The brothers know you are laboring to enter your rest. And they appreciate it. Hallelujah. And for the guys, do your best. Stop borrowing clothes from everybody so that you will be smart. Be contented with what you have. Say, Kai, that lady looked at my leg when we were talking the last time. I beg, help me with your canvas. Why must you pretend? You borrow car, you borrow Blackberry, you borrow everything. You don't know how to use it. You put yourself under pressure. You carry 50,000 that God bless you with. I need to buy a baby. I need to buy a baby. Don't sit down and press for your destiny. What is it about a Blackberry that, that you cannot get? Are you listening to me? I'm challenging you tonight. Away with childishness. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. Like a child. When you become a man, you lay aside childish things. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Bless the Lord for tonight. Manda baka Purpose and destiny. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Say, Lord, I bless you for this word. I receive your word with meekness. I receive your word with gladness. Yes, I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Pray. Say, Lord, tonight I receive grace to discover my purpose. I refuse to be a non-entity. I stop wasting my life. I stop wasting my time. I pay the price. Pray. Lord, reveal to me what am I on earth for? Why am I here? Why did you bring me here? Mataka Patalabasa. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I called you. I separated you to be a prophet unto the nations. And Jeremiah said, I am a young man. He said, I'm a young man. God said, No. I will put my word in your mouth and you will declare don't be afraid of them. Let entrepreneurs arise. Let apostolic ministries arise. Prophetic ministries arise. Evangelistic ministries arise. Let businessmen arise. Kingdom financiers arise. Life coaches arise. Come on, pray. Media giants arise. Educationists arise. In the name that is above every name. Managers arise. Pastors arise. Apostles Arise, prophets, arise, interior decoration giants, I call you arise, kingdom caterers, arise, sportsmen, arise, kingdom celebrities, musicians, consultants, the kingdom needs you, in the name of Jesus arise. 
scientists, arise. Manufacturers, arise. Music ministers, in the name of Jesus, arise. Come on, pray. I discover my assignment. I discover my assignment. In the name of Jesus, I find my place in life. I stop escorting men. I stop escorting men. I find my place. The place of glory. The place of victory. The place of breakthrough. Now I come in the volume of the book as it is written concerning me to do your will. Pray. I am not a nobody. My world will celebrate me. Prophesy to yourself. Nigeria will hear your voice. Africa will hear your voice. The Moses of our time, the Joshua's of our time, the Elijah's of our time. Rise up, generals. Rise up, generals. Pray. I find my place in life. I pay the price. I read the books. I pray. I give. I serve my way into glory. You are a celebrity. You are a champion. God will give you the fame. God will give you the grace. He will give you prosperity like you have never seen. He will give you anointing. The husband will come. The wife will come. But stay in the place of destiny. Stop giving excuses. Stop giving excuses. Repent tonight. Blame the excuses. Stop giving excuses. Take responsibility over your life. Stop blaming the government. Stop blaming your parents. Stop blaming your background. Stop blaming your uncle. Take responsibility for your life. Come on, pray. Shake a take a pata. Go stop protest of pata. Let the least among us be as mighty as David. You will preach this message to your congregations. You will preach this message to your children. You will preach this message to your business partners. You will preach this message. One day you will be on air. One day you will be on satellite. The world will share you. You will make reference to this day. I open up the portal of destiny over your life. I open up the portal of purpose over your life. Let revelation come. Let revelation come. I prophesy to you. Find your place. 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 There is a place for you. Only you. Only you. You are an answer. You are a solution to a problem. Don't rob us. Don't rob us. There is something about your life that our generation needs. Don't die with your gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While I say this, I want to say something important. But if you are coming here for the first time, for time's sake, please run out while I say this. If this is your first time, just walk out, we'll pray for you. While, I'm, while you are coming out, listen everybody. The gift of a man 
Please, if this is your first time, please come out while I'm speaking. The gift of a man make it room. Say after me, make it room. Say the gift of a man. The potentials of a man makes room for him and brings him before great people. Say the gift of a man brings him before great men. If you find your gift, you find your place in life. Once upon a time, I was a nobody, but the gift that the Lord has given has made room for me. That's why there is no boasting because it's the election of grace. Can we listen to you tomorrow? Can you stop giving excuses? All kinds of excuses. We live in a world where the youth in Nigeria, there is no other place in the world where the youth shy away from responsibility like Nigeria. We run away from responsibility. That's why people like a God that does everything. No, sir. That kind of Christianity, we bury it in this place. Hallelujah. Write the following books, please. I know those of you who are here, they will remember. Please, write the following books. Buy it. Check the library if they have the books. Get it. Discovering Your Potentials by Dr. Miles Munro. Discovering Your Potentials by Dr. Miles Munro. Discovering Your Potentials. Then Understanding Your Potentials still by Dr. Miles Munro. Understanding Your Potentials. God's Big Idea still by Dr. Miles Munro. The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. The Purpose Driven Life Rick Warren. The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. Have you written that? Oh dear, there is one on my mind right now. I just forgot. Lord help me. I have to bring this out. trying to remember. I just forgot it right now. Finishing Strong by who? Steve Farah. Finishing Strong. You need to read that book. Finishing Strong by Steve Farah. These books will help you. You can explore others. Go to Jordan Bookstore tomorrow. Wake Jordan from his house and say, I need my destiny. My destiny must move forward. Come and open your books. Get these books. Sit down. Listen. Some of you can form little groups among yourself. Instead of gisting and gossiping about people, sit down. Give yourself an assignment. Do you understand? You read Stephara's book. You read my small own, and then you come and have a little Bible study. There's nothing wrong. You edify yourself. It will drive away visionless people from your life. Turn your room into a place of vision. Don't allow anybody come into your room and use it as a place of gossip and backbiting and asking you useless questions. Do you like that guy? Tell him, look, I'm, I'm studying. If you are not going to help me in my destiny, please walk out. Thank you, Jesus. Please stretch your hands as we pray for those who are just coming. Thank you for coming. We love you. Thank you for spending time. I pray that tonight's meeting will change your life forever. It changed mine. We bless you with the blessings of the heavens. We bless you with the blessings of the earth. We declare in the name of Jesus that from tonight, you begin to walk in purpose. You begin to walk in the path of destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, every complex, every inferiority, Everyone who has talked you down and made you feel like there is nothing about your life. I prophesy and I announce to you that tonight is the beginning of a great day. Those who have laughed at you will laugh with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate you. I'd like you to quickly follow the ushers. They'll have your information and they'll greet you quickly. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.